Hello there everyone, good evening, welcome to the stream, hope everyone is uh, doing fine and I hope the stream itself is also doing fine. I think I have fixed the little issue with the chat uh, that I was having on Wednesday, so I should be getting the chats in again, uh, at least uh, the the little lamps or uh, lights are all green, so uh, um, I think we should be good. <laughs> but you know, it's live streaming, so something is bound to go wrong at some point. Um, we'll, we'll figure it out, you know, we, uh, we take it as it comes. <laughs> uh, so yeah, today uh, we are doing some more uh, testing of the tapes. I have, uh, wow, I have really been testing my Jenga skills here and making this uh, tower of power. <laughs> uh, I have another beer here, uh, same as, uh, no, it's not the same actually. It is from Tiny Rebel, uh, because... I had Mo Problem beer in, on Wednesday, and this is actually Mo Money. Yeah, uh, weird kind of naming conventions. Uh, and this one is uh, from Pomegranate. Pomegranate, I'm not actually sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, but another fruit, and this is actually a fruit that uh, I don't think I've actually, actually um, had as a normal fruit. Uh, so, you know, let's, uh, let's have a taste and find out if this is good in at least a beer. Yeah, I think. Let's wait on the aftertaste. Yeah, no, that, this one is actually better than the one I had Wednesday, which was quite, uh, which had a really, really bad aftertaste. And hey there, that Dutch guy, and uh, great, my TTS uh, system is working. Uh, I actually get these beers, uh, there is like these um, uh, kind of these, these packs they have, where it's called Save the Beer, uh, where you get beers that are about to go out of date, uh, and this way it is a, a cheaper, uh, because some of these beers normally they cost uh, like 3-4 euros the pop, uh, which I find a bit too pricey for a beer uh, at home. Uh, but also, what is more interesting is that you do actually get to explore different kinds of beers this way, uh, which is really in enjoyable, because sometimes if a beer is really tasty, it's not that bad to uh, spend a bit more on it. Uh, for example, the cherry beer I had uh, um, in these packs, I really enjoyed that, and uh, normally I had the Creek, uh, Creek Lambic, um, but I'm actually uh, more impartial to that one now. So, you know, that way I you can get to know me more kinds of beers and just figure it out. And the company that makes this is, I think it's called Hopt. H-O-P-T. Uh, they also, they have all kinds of beers. Uh, so yeah, I, I do tend to get their Save the Beer or uh, Red Hat Beer <laughs> uh, packet. Uh, so yeah, that's where I get those beers and uh, yeah, really really just a fun thing to to add as I uh, try out new beers myself um, Today I wanted to also start on some uh, Like the first collection uh, and there's a bit of a problem unfortunately with that which we will get into uh, also, I've got a new uh, thing here, which I so please let me know if the audio is good because I and I hope this won't sound too bad. I got a ni nice new uh, stand to put on the desk here uh, for the microphone. Uh, because I used to have it on the arm and it was real fiddly to always get it on the right position. And, you know, just having something that you can just can plonk down is much easier. Uh, um, so I hope this works well. Uh, I think it might be a bit in the, in the, in the frame uh, still a bit. But, uh, you know, let's just call that... Uh, uh, that this video has more depth now, I suppose. <laughs> uh, the only thing that I can't add on this one, well, I can, but it's the pop filter, and then I'd like it, it will fit half the screen, so we'll do, just do without. Uh, anyway, uh, how about we jump over to the actual uh, game center here and start our first game, uh, which I might show up like this. It, it was the one we didn't get to two weeks ago uh, because I had a week off where I just had headaches. Uh, but yeah, first game we will be trying out is Gothic with a K at the end. Uh, not related to the other Gothic games. 
at all. Uh, and I should start up the old thing with Bob that will display which game we are playing. Uh, and this is uh, Snow and AB, so should be good. Should be good, I hope. Most of these tapes, they are, uh, you know, uh, recorded on both sides, so it generally doesn't matter too much uh, which side to use. Unless, of course, it's a really big game, uh, which this one kind of is. Uh, I remember this one being actually quite nice. I suppose we should uh, uh, read the thing. Uh, it's a, uh, I remember correctly, like sort of, kind of a more slower paced uh, gauntlet affair, uh, more RPG oriented in that regard. Uh, but it is that, you know, uh, overhead kind of thing where you get rid of monsters. Uh, that's, uh, and it, at least it has found it. That's great. So let's see how this is played because um, I do remember it being not too difficult but it does have a couple of mechanics we uh, uh, you need to keep track of are we working I did not actually charge my phone battery so hopefully we can hold out long enough uh, let's see credits no we don't care about the credits well we die kind of do but you know not uh, not right now uh, long ago in the lands of the of the north of Balorn there was peace and the people were content their life was good and their troubles were few among the people lived oh boy <laughs> Hasrinax, a druid of few and simple powers. Uh, but the people loved him and treated him with a great respect. One day a great army came, led by an evil lord who laid siege upon the village. The people were in fear of the lord, but he was powerful and could work strong magic, so they did not take up arms against his force. The druid, with no help from the people, could not defeat the evil lord. And so he was taken prisoner. The evil lord enslaved the people and got them to work building a huge castle. Upon completion of the castle, he cast a strong spell on the druid to ensure he could not be set free. He divided the druid's body into six parts. Dude, that's not a spell. <laughs> that's straight up murder, Mo. Uh, and set each part in a secret chamber. These hidden chambers were, in turn, guarded by a mighty demon, and the evil lord kept guard over the druid's robe himself. The evil lord reigned over the land for many years and brought sorrow to the lives of the people one day however the young warrior who was passing through the land caught sight of the four dark towers of the castle a mysterious voice called out the young warrior's name beckoning him to draw nearer to the castle and enter the walls the young warrior could not fail to respond you are that young warrior you must take up arms against the servants of the evil lord and recover the six parts of the druid's body and together with his robe reunite them so that the druid will live once more so that the evil lord can be defeated at the start of the game you can choose which warrior to be either olga the superheroine who is stronger in the powers of magic, particularly the casting of lightning bolts and fireball magic, or Ulfa, the hero, who is stronger in combat and swift in the use of arrows. As you progress through the towers, you will find various potions, which can be picked up whenever a potion is taken, 
the status display will appear on the screen for a few seconds to tell you which potion you have. All right, sounds pretty cool. Uh, hey there, Grandem. Uh, great to have you. Sorry, I was just reading the thing, so then I just uh, figured I would pass through, but uh, awesome to have you. We just started out, so you haven't missed anything yet. Uh, that's all the potions. So let's not deal with that. I just am interested in the controls. Um, so we know how to deal with enemies and fire and all that good stuff. Uh, there's also food. That's good. Warrior always needs food badly. <laughs> uh, let's see. All right, so up is up. Status display is space. Good. Take potion. Enter portal is the left arrow. Okay. And quit and pass we don't really need. And control is metamorphosis for food. Okay, we don't really need that, I don't think. Uh, left arrow is... Yeah. Uh, good question. I think it's without control. I don't. You don't use the cursor keys on the Commodore all too often. Unless you do code a lot, then I suppose you do. Kind of interesting. Normally they have the... Um, uh, the manual as part of the inlay, but for this one they have a completely separate. We didn't actually read the blurb on the box, uh, did we? They can uh, sometimes be quite hilarious too. <laughs> it's uh, it's kind of ridiculous this game as well, isn't it? Like uh, the 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 backstory is just like a thing they seem to have just tagged on. It feels so generic. Your master, supreme wizard. Engronch? En Wait. We were... The, the manual actually was talking about this druid of a village and we were a wandering warrior. And now it's our master and he has a different name. But he has been slain by the archmage... On, on Salon? It's a to to totally different... <laughs> it's a totally different uh, story. Okay. Uh, that's enough of that, I think. Let's actually uh, see if we can play it. Because I think it has loaded here. Although I have not... Uh, I'm not hearing any music yet. Which is because I made a little boo-boo. Uh, just a moment, how I fix this, uh, I'll be right back. Alright, there we go. Hey there, Ed. Great to have you. And uh, yeah, sometimes, yeah, if the if the if the game loads wrong, perhaps yeah, maybe you get the uh, the other one. Anyway, yeah, my audio cables were still um, the CDI CDI cables were still in there, so I had to really quickly switch them up there. Something always has to go wrong, doesn't it? <laughs> it's part of the game. Uh. Oh, okay, just restart the music. Right? Yeah. It's kind of quiet. But, uh, can you hear it like so? Or should I just up it a bit? Uh, no, it seems to be at a decent level. So kind of hard to tell yourself because I have it uh, quiet. You know, lowered it down for my headphones as well. 
Um, you know, because I want to hear the lovely chat messages and such. Anyway, uh, we should get started. So we have uh, Olga, or plus space to change. Olga or Olaf. Uh, I think there was other, also a typo in the uh, manual because that wasn't it? Didn't they say his name was Olfa? Olfla? I don't know. Uh, they kind of look like gremlins, don't they? <laughs> Uh, I yeah, let's just go with all guys, suppose. And here we go. Wow, it's very saturated. Okay, so that's shoot. Uh, it's an arcing shot. Boy, that's uh, that's difficult. Are are that, are those things? Can I pick this up? No, doesn't seem like it. Can't do anything with that. So. Oh boy, I don't remember everything. I think the first bar is gold. The second must be life, I suppose, because it's full. But then I don't know. I think the third is, I don't know, maybe magic? Or is the fifth magic? And I think the fourth is arrows. And I think, yeah, we can choose here. So arrows... And this is the fireball, I think. And I believe the fireball gets rid of this stuff. Oh, yeah. Did it actually... Yeah, so it seems like... Let's test it out again. Oh, wow, we actually blew... It. Yeah, the third one is uh, magic. Uh, let's go for this one. It's also magic, but I think it'll use less... Um, magical power. Oh boy. No, 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 no. no. Okay, let's just go this way. Way to catch that sap. There we go. Uh, this is a potion, right? So. Okay, left arrow doesn't do anything. Control, no. It's not a potion, maybe? Ouch. I hate it if controls don't work as uh, they are uh, listed in the manual. We had that same issue last time we played some games. So hopefully we can figure it out. Uh, otherwise we will be out of magic very soon. And uh, help too, I guess. Yo, buddy. Boom! <laughs> At least it's easy to... Uh... Oh, wait. There's another one. Get out of here. Uh, but yeah, we are, uh, we are almost out of uh, magic there. So that's no good. This, these must be potions, right? Yeah, it's not working. What the heck? Um, okay, let's find out in the... Because there's also controls for the other systems. Maybe we can... Uh, take this... Okay, for other systems, it's enter. <laughs> it's it's definitely not enter. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, this this kind of sucks, doesn't it? On these uh, older systems, if they don't do what they're supposed to do. Uh, no, want the, the lightning bolt here. Okay. There's him dead. Are we out of magic? 
Oh. Is there a cooldown? I uh, can't actually walk past the corpses here. There we go. Okay, so how do we pick this up? F1, 3. Man, <laughs> if we can't pick up items, this is going to be a short game because. Okay, uh, we found the button. Uh, it's the, well, I want to say tilde key, but I don't think there's a tilde key on the Commodore 64. <laughs> Is the first key actually a one? It shows how well I actually know the system, doesn't it? Uh, but again, the manual, it says the left arrow, and obviously it's not the left arrow. I suppose we can also use some arrows, because we've got uh, more of those now. No, no, no. Yeah, the arrow is not our specialty, that's for sure. Get here, you. We're not done with you yet. <laughs> Man. He's gonna kill me. Uh, arrows don't work that well. It's really hard to aim with this arc and shot. And we're almost dead now. Can't pick this up, can we? Yeah, that's some food. Okay, these, these blobby things are food. Okay, we found out uh, how to actually pick up things. That's important, that's important. This is a potion. I'm, but what kind of potion? What did it do? Under, under Pune? No, that was there before, wasn't it? Oh boy. Oh, that's the wrong way. We don't actually have to kill them all, I suppose. It's our shot. I think you're safe from your own shots. Here's another potion. Wow, that goes away so fast, I, c I can't really see what it is. Flame, right? Did it say flame? And... Pretty dead. Uh, those are... I don't know. These drinks? Is that magic? Let's see. Yeah, that appears to be magic. Kind of annoying having to uh, reach for the Commodore there. Ideally, of course, you have the Commodore right in front of you, but my cables aren't long enough to uh, uh, provide that comfort, unfortunately. But, you know, it looks, uh, it works like this as well. So, no worries there. Um, and I think we should be, uh, yeah, we are nice, full up on magic now. So, uh, let's explore more of this maze here. Uh, yeah, and as you can see, it, it's kind of, uh, I think you can kind of see where I draw that comparison to uh, uh, Gauntlet. Uh, plays kind of like it, but it's more oriented. I think that Skeleton uh, skele skeleton is actually the, uh, uh, the Druid Skeleton. Way to go completely the wrong way, Seb. Uh, the Druid Skeleton, so as you find the pieces, it will fill in, I, I guess. No. Yes, it still hit me. Damn it. Are these then... I don't know. Let's uh, 
Just pick it up. Pick it up. What did we get? Not a whole lot. I don't know what the fifth bar is for. Uh, that's food, isn't it? We need food. Yeah, we need food badly. Because <laughs> uh, Red Warrior is about to die. You can have fun with the bullets there. There we go. Uh, it seems like killing stuff doesn't actually do anything for you. Apart, you know, from getting rid of the enemies, of course. Uh, no clue what that is, but we'll take it. Oh boy. Ouch. Slow. Are we, s we are slow. That's not a good potion. It's a curse. <laughs> okay, so some potions are bad. Good to know. Uh, he seems very eager to come our way. Can we? Yeah, we got rid of him. Mm. Can we get past here? We cannot. Uh, what the heck is this? I don't know. Oh, we are out of magic, aren't we? Yeah, we can't, we can't actually cast a fireball. Oh boy, this is bad. Let's just see what this does, I suppose. Yeah, we are we are about to die here. <laughs> I think we need to hit it to arrows, but Olga isn't that great with arrows. Can can arrows get rid of that stuff? No, it cannot. I think that's the exit, but I can't get into it because uh, we're... Oh no. No, 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 no. Can you actually... No, you can't use... I think we are stuck. Because I can't get through here. That's unfortunate. Still don't know what it does. What is that thing? Looks like a potion, but uh, didn't do me any good. Seems like uh, enemies are like ever respawning. Uh, so it seems like the best way is to just go through the maze, pick up all the uh, things that you need uh, to pick up and get out of there as fast as you can. Uh, and I'm... I'm curious. I, f I don't think this is a randomized layout. So I suppose you can, you know, learn uh, the, the way of the land and, and rush through it. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. There must be an easier way to actually get rid of that um, stuff on the floor. Not sure if anyone has any experience with this game, um, but yeah, it's kind of like a sort of more involved gauntlet game, I think. Uh, seems pretty nice. Uh, what am I doing? There we go. But I think it is time to head over to our next game, why don't we? Uh, because it doesn't seem like we will be getting very far with my skills. But I do like that one. Uh, looks like a lot of fun you can really get into. Uh, just need to practice that and really get used to all of the things that you have to your disposal. And, and...
I thought we were already there, but it's longer than I thought. Um, yeah, just a cool game overall. Which is nice for a change. Uh, it does help if you have uh, the Commodore right where you are playing, though. <laughs> And I should change my setup a bit uh, to, to facilitate that more, but on the other hand, most of the games I'm mostly interested in won't have that problem. Uh, and the next game is not a game I am very interested in. It is going to be um, a mess, because I do not know how to play this one. I don't even know how to pronounce this one. How do you say that? Guadal Canal? I don't know. Uh, it's this game. It's a uh, simulation game, I think. Um, like a naval battle simulation game. Uh, and yeah, this is... Uh, this is going to be terrible. And yeah, this one has side A, so... I suppose... With these things, oftentimes they have like different scenarios you can play with these strategy games on the Commodore 64. Uh, and you load the first part of the game and then you choose your scenario and then you have to load another part. Uh, not sure if that is the case with this one, but uh, we'll see, we'll see what we will find. Um... But yeah, these, these strategy games on the... Again, a, a separate manual. Uh, strategy games on the Commodore 64, they can be very, very involved. And they are, uh, I find, very difficult to get uh, to get to grips uh, with. So um, this is really mostly looking to see if the thing will actually load than me actually playing this one. Um... Quadalcano, Quadalcano. I really don't know what, uh, how to pronounce that. Quada, Quadalcano is a. I think it's a place, right? No, I don't know. Uh, anyway, it's a comprehensive strategic war game which covers the battle for the island in the latter months of 1942. <laughs> That's funny because we will have a 1942 later on as well. Uh, but yeah, it's an island, so... The game has been designed with, the, with ease of play in mind. Oh, that's good to know. Allowing total control over either the Japanese or the American forces. Using icons to move and control the air, land and sea units. The player must strategically deploy his forces and engage the enemy on and around Quadal Quadalcano. <laughs> the aim being to gain eventual control of the island. Someone who actually knows how to pronounce that uh, place is, is, is probably freaking out right about now. <laughs> Many factors govern the outcome of the conflict and no game will ever be the same. Yeah, sounds uh, like a strategy game, <laughs> uh, which is uh, which is a genre I am very bad at. Even the ones I understand. Um, and yeah, as expected, this manual is absolutely giant. Oh man, there's not even a lot of pictures. <laughs> yeah, let's see uh, if we can find like the uh, uh, overall blurb of, of it. Spoos. Guadalcano is a comprehensive strategy war game which covers the battle of the island between the American, uh, American and Japanese forces in the latter months of 1942. Allowing, allowing, this is the same blurb as on the back, isn't it? Allowing total control over all the fighting forces of either side. The game has been designed with ease of play in mind and is 
completely icon driven. Although the game is easy enough to learn by picking up the joystick and referring to the icon indexes as you go along, victory will be hard to achieve unless you have the full understanding of the rules and objectives, which suggests that you learn how to use your forces before attempting a full campaign scenario. As in the actual battle, the main object of the game is to win control of Pingy Island, <laughs> see enclosed map. This may be achieved in many ways. As commander in chief, you have land, sea, and air, uh, or oh, and intelligence uh, forces at your disposal, and must build them up on the island. Transport ships may be used to ferry in troops and supplies, while the navy and air force are deployed to protect your interests and attack the enemy. You also have aircraft carriers at your command, along with their strike capabilities. On the island itself are your supply bases and harbors, giving support to all your land forces. Henderson Field is the biggest prize of all and must be protected at all costs. The intelligence corps may be used for espionage purposes and has a vital role in decision making. All enemy movements and positions are hidden and may only be found by skillful use of your scouts and seaplane. There are many factors which govern the outcome. Well that's not good. I think it, uh, it did crash. It did do a crashing here. Let's, uh, let's try it again. And just for good measure, let's uh, give it a good back and forth. Um, this doesn't always make a huge difference, but sometimes it does. So uh, might as well try it out. Is the stream still working? <laughs> uh, yeah, looks like it. So far, so good. And let's have it uh, try that again. See if we can actually load it. Let's go. There are many factor, factors which govern the outcome of the conflict, and no game will be the same. You will find a full history of the battle near the back of the manual. Might be interesting to check out because I'm doubtful we will get far into the game anyway. Uh. Instructions are for the disc, not for the... Just looking if it is supposed to take this long. No, it doesn't say anything special about loading. Oh well. Uh, game scenarios on the disc or cassette are a number of scenarios. Uh, they, these are selected from the menu which appears on screen when the game has loaded. Simply move the joystick to highlight the required game and press fire. Scenario 1 is a short 3 day battle in which the player takes the American side. This is intended for gaining battle experience only. Sounds like the game we should be playing if it in indeed will load. 
Uh, yeah, the other ones are the full campaigns. Uh, okay. I don't actually know the history of this battle. Does anyone? I am very unfamiliar with the Pacific side of World War II in general. Uh, not that I am that um, enthralled in, in all of the ins and outs of the um, uh, World Wars in general. It's always stuff that interests me, but I, I'm not one who will uh, seek it out normally on my own. But you know, when, when is something does present itself, it's always stuff that does interest me. Um, I'm not sure where it actually starts though. Yeah, that's uh, from Pearl Harbor to Guadalcanal. Guadalcanal. I'm, I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, on Sunday morning, 7th December 1941, four Japanese carriers launched a massive attack on the US naval base at Pearl Harbor. Over 400 aircraft attacked the Pacific Fleet with devastating results, but, as chance would have it, all the American carriers would at, were at sea. America was now at war with Japan. The first year started badly for America. Manila, the capital of the Philippines, fell on New Year's Day, pushing U.S. forces back to the Bataan Peninsula, there we go, words, they are difficult, <laughs> uh, holding on bravely for five months, they inevitably uh, capitulated to the overwhelming Japanese forces. Japan's conquests in the Pacific were now at their greatest. Steps were already underway to strike back at the Empire, the aircraft carrier Hornet laden with 16 B-25 bombers, each with a payload of one ton, achieved a strike attack on Tokyo, the heart of the Japanese Empire. Oh my goodness, there's a lot of text. I'm not going to get through there. <laughs> In June 1942, the Japanese carrier fleet uh, congregated near Midway, Midway Island, 1300 miles northwest of Hawaii, dangerously close to the west coast of America. Thus began one of the greatest sea battles in history. Unknown to the Japanese, US intelligence was breaking their code. I think we're crashing again, damn it. <laughs> yep. Hey there, Oxbowish Misty. I'm just going to say uh, Misty there because uh, me and names, we are terrible. <laughs> uh, and 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 when I say we, it's just the me part in uh, me and names. Uh, but yeah, great to see you. Welcome aboard. And unfortunately, we have uh, come to a game that is actually not wanting to load. It seems. Let's uh, try the other side but since this game uses different scenarios i doubt uh this one actually works um but yeah should i say misty or ox oxbowies oxbowies i am sorry my um the, f the thing that is blaring in my ear, it also makes a mess of words, <laughs> especially names. Um, so I need to just read it and Oxbowise Misty. Hey, I did find it. And I do recognize your name from the videos. You've been watching quite a few of my videos, so that's awesome. Uh, but it's, it's kind of interesting, you know, because 
you see the names, you recognize the names, but you might not actually know how to pronounce them. Oxbow. All right, uh, we uh, we will keep that. <laughs> we'll save that under important info. <laughs> It's, uh, you know, those are the fun with usernames and such. <laughs> uh, and yeah, these stripey things usually uh, mean disaster as well. So I'm not holding out a whole lot of hope here. Yeah, it's, it's going so fast in my ear that I can't really, because it's a word that I don't recognize, uh, so I can't even really say it back that fast. Uh, it, it's really, I, I got it in and it just sounds to me like, oh wait, I don't know that name, so I need to look it up. Uh, because that's the funny thing, you know, uh, a lot of... Oxboimsti it's making. Uh, it sounds like Oxboimsti. So, you know. It's, yeah. <laughs> um, but that's kind of like, also with reading and such, uh, you tend to recognize words from, um, you know, it's, it's, it's how I read as well, where I just see words and I recognize like kind of how they look. Um, and that's kind of the same with, with hearing things as well. It sounds as, so it must be then. But that is, of course, an issue if you actually come across a word that is actually something you're not familiar with yet. So you really have to uh, uh, learn to reduce this. Which tends to happen a lot with names. And um, I tend to always just ask people, like, how, how, should I, uh, how should I pronounce your name? Especially when it comes to uh, uh, foreign names and such. I kind of hate it when people uh, just, you know, they hear a name and they are uh, uh, and, and and they are making it easier and just never use the actual proper name from someone. Uh, I know uh, a friend of mine. Uh, his name was uh, well Elder, but uh, there was an H in there, and in Dutch. Uh, <laughs> uh, we tend to pronounce our H's, so everyone would call him Elder. Um, and he just went with that, uh, eventually. And, you know, it just, it, it just sounds a bit disrespectful. If you know a name is differently pronounced, uh, you know, just ask people how should I pronounce your name and just use that. Small, uh, small thing to do, I think, uh, you know. Um... And yeah, yeah, you have been a lot. Uh, you've been uh, checking out those videos for quite a long time, huh, haven't you? Uh, because uh, yeah, I have seen your name pop up quite some years now. So yeah, really, thank you for that. Really awesome. Uh, also, great to see you now on the stream. Then um, don't expect high quality streams because I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, but you know, have known what I was doing for years, so nothing changed there, I suppose. <laughs> but <laughs> We, uh, slowly but surely we will learn and uh, on these streams we will just check out some Commodore 64 tapes um, see if they work uh, and this one doesn't seem like it does want to work which is unfortunately because you know it's a lot of that time I prefer to actually play the games at work uh, but oh well beggars can be choosers uh, also do stream on Wednesday and there we have more CDI stuff uh, but you know things might change because uh, again I have no clue what I'm doing so <laughs> things might change as we go and uh, also what uh, what people are just in for yeah it's uh, it's no problem really like once I um... I recognize some something like how it's supposed to sound and I just know it and I can react accordingly. Yeah, this one is a bust. Uh, I think I think this is actually the first game that doesn't load at all, is it it? Because we had busts before, but those would load on the other side. But this one 
appears to be our first dead one. That's unfortunate. But on the other hand, these things are so old by now. So I'm kind of surprised that they hold out as well as they did. Uh, and here is one. Uh, I kind of hope it works because uh, it's, uh, it's a good game. It's a hard game. We have uh, Euridium, really awesome game. Uh, I actually went through all my small boxes, but I used this one, this case, in a review once for a uh, steel machine, and <laughs> of course I misplaced it. So I, I just found it recently again. Um, but yeah, let's uh, hope that it works, because Euridium... Euridium is a uh, really neat game. There's a lot of fans on Commodore 64 as well. Uh, notorious game because it, uh, or well, uh, the game itself is not notorious, but the NES version is because it was a lazy port and they just slapped the, um, uh, what movie was it? Lost Starfighter, that's it. Uh, they just named it Lost Starfighter and uh, there's your yeah, tie in game and they just ported this game over. Kind of ridiculous. Uh, thing to do. Anyway, uh, let's see what the box actually says, because uh, I don't know if I actually read it. Uh, what am I doing? I don't think I've actually read this box uh, before, because, you know, skits, we don't read. We just play the games. <laughs> it can be uh, really fun to, to just read the, um, uh, the props. And uh, yeah, I use my phone as a magnifier uh, to actually read what's on there. Uh, let's see. And this is uh, a a budget box. So, you know, this is like kind of how we had uh, Platinum or Greatest Hits on PlayStation. Uh, these guys had Racket, uh, which is a, um, you know, sort of uh, the same thing. A budget line of... Uh, Good selling games they had in the past to have a re release. The classic uh, Houston release by Andrew Braybro Braybrook, converted to the Spectrum by Dominic uh, Robinson, a Z Zap Sizzler, and a Crash Smash. Golden Joysticks Arcade Game of the Year in 1986. Winner of Zap 64's Best Shoot 'em Up uh, 1986, winner of Crash's Best Shoot 'em Up 1986, Andrew Braybrook, winner of Zap's uh, 64's Best Programmer 1986, and Newfield's Best Programmer 1987. First ever released releases release at a budget price. Yeah, great. And yeah, these budget games tended to go for about 3 euros or, well, <laughs> guilders back then, uh, or uh, pounds for guilders, probably around 5. Um, the solar system is under attack. Enemy super dreadnoughts have been placed in orbit around each of the 15 planets in this galactic sector. There are draining mineral resources from the planetary cores for use in their interstellar power units. Each super dreadnought seeks out a different metal for its metal converter. Your mantra class space fighter will be transported to each planet in turn and it is your task to destroy each dreadnought before you must attack First, you must attack the defensive screen of enemy fighters. Then, you must neutralize the majority of surface defenses before you land the Super Dreadnought's Master Runaway. There was an on on there. Uh, but yeah, that's basically it. Very simplistic story. Uh, I think the furthest I ever got was like the third Dreadnought. Uh, this game, it's, it's, it's really fast paced. A nice little sit tune there. Uh, let me know if it's actually loud enough or if it needs to be up a bit. 
Uh, and uh, yeah, let's uh, have a go at it. See how disastrous this will go. Uh, what ship was actually grey? Huh. Yeah, there we go. Huh, not sh No, now it turns uh, yellow. Okay, I misremembered. Oh boy. And uh, the biggest problem with these things is uh, not so much the enemies, but um, like you got that thing in the middle there. Yeah, you can crash on that. Uh, so you really have to take care of the shadows and, you know, keep those in mind. And that makes it, usually that's where I crash most of the times. S on Q. <laughs> Uh, and the enemies do shoot, so a rogue bullet will also uh, do you in quite nicely, unfortunately. And yeah, you just have to uh, get rid of all of the stuff that you can shoot on the ship. And shoot some enemies, and uh, eventually you get told to land. Which you can do on those uh, landing pads there. And after you do it, you get a nice little scene where the ship gets blown up. Pretty cool stuff. And yeah, for some reason on NES they picked up this game and they called it uh, The Lost Starfighter. And there she came. For the movie. <laughs> so, we'll, so I tend to try and go slow. Uh, the issue with going slow, however, is that you are... Much more susceptible to enemy fire. But yeah, that was the first one. Here's just a bonus game for points. Uh, let's see if we can actually do this. Uh, there we go. And I messed it up. And now we get to blow up the ship. So satisfying. Again, let me know if the audio levels are okay, or if something needs to be louder. I'm not sure if my voice is actually right uh, uh, this time around. Uh, and now our ship is actually uh, reddish, or orange. We're just the same color as the enemies. Maybe that's actually uh, where they changed it on the NES, um, where it's just always gray. Seems like something they could do. Yeah, this is just such a classic, uh, such a classic um, uh, uh, game. This, and we can land. Uh, we can't land here. We just need to go to the end, I suppose. But yeah, ah, crap. Uh, that little signal, the alarm sound, that means that you can land. Uh, so you need to make your way to the end. Uh, but again, you know, the, you um, you want to go fast, but then there will be a blockage. And uh, yeah, thanks Expo for uh, uh, telling me about the audio, that's good to know. Uh, Oxbo, I should say. Still managed to mess it up, damn it! <laughs> Sorry about that. Let's have another go at it, now that we had a practice run. <laughs> And there we go! Just someone decided to shoot there. Like there's... I don't think there's really a way to avoid that. They, uh, they just fly past you and they, uh, they, they shoot you down. Uh, okay, that was my fault. Or did I fly against that one? The first time too. No. Must be their fault. <laughs> I will make up any excuse I can. Because I'm actually a, uh, a professional gamer. I know everything. And I never make any mistakes. So it's... Yeah, we can't land yet. Oh, we can. Okay. I didn't hear the signal. Let's try this again. <laughs> I 
I was focusing on the right one actually, but in the attempt of to not hit it. <laughs> but oh well, if you focus on something, you will get it, I guess. Uh, and yeah, this 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 game does remind me again, like compared to Steel Machine, this just plays a bit nicer. Steel Machine is so frustrating uh, in in comparison. Uh, although that's not uh, that's not helping this cause at all. <laughs> I wanted to get to the first stage, damn it! Let's try it again. Does it actually have an auto fire? That would be nice. It does not. Thing in the middle, Seb. You know that's there. <laughs> so yeah, I'm really glad. What what killed me there? I'm really glad that this one uh, actually works. Because uh, yeah, it is uh, just just such a classic. And I know I got further, uh, but yeah, you really need to practice this. Oh no. It's not what I want to do. You don't. <laughs> I keep doing worse and worse. That one, that time didn't count. <laughs> and this game was also part uh, ported. Yeah, this game was so popular, so it's not surprising if you played a game that was uh, like it, because it got a lot of um, uh, imitations made after it. Uh, you know, not too surprising. There was also a sequel, by the way, uh, which also plays kind of the same on the Amiga. Uh, although, I, I do prefer this version, uh, the first one. Uh, there we go. Ah, damn it. <laughs> It's just so satisfying if you make it uh, all the way to the top, but oh well. Uh, and there were a lot of ports uh, on, on the other micros as well. I'm not sure how well they play. Um, I can't imagine it would play very... Like Commodore 64 tended to be quite fast in comparison to the other uh, micros. So, yeah, I don't know if this would uh, would have been great on the ZX Spectrum. Although, you know, the Spectre could pull up some decent speed as well, I suppose. Uh, although... I don't know if the, uh, the Spectrum version would be easy to follow, because I can't... This is not a game where you want color clashing. Because there's so much going on. No! <laughs> Bloody wall. <laughs> and I remember the Amiga version was just a bit uh, too... Like, too much going on on the screen. Ah, damn it. It can go south real quick. Uh, but yeah, that's Uridium. A uh, lovely game. Love it. Um, it's my thing. It's my, my phone to check on time uh, because I want to uh, keep a bit more uh, track of time. And you know, as this uh, plays out for now a bit, I suppose we uh, should head on to the next game. Um, to keep going a bit. And uh, that's in this box. Um, this was one of my favorite boxes uh, back in the day. Uh, However, before I started the recording session, I noticed that I made a bit boo-boo because Seb has been Seb uh, because he, uh, mis he misplaced half the freaking box. I'm missing a cassette, damn it. <laughs> ah, man. So, uh, yeah, we're missing half the games in this one, unfortunately, and uh, some of my favorites uh, were on there. Uh... So, yeah, that kind of sucks. I, I'm not sure, maybe it's in some other tape deck or something, I have no clue. Uh, it's also so unlike me to not put stuff back in a box, but yeah, it happened. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, 
Frank Bruno's Big Box. <laughs> uh, which is just, you know, like a little tie-in from Frank Bruno's. I, I, I doubt he actually had anything to do with this. Uh, Frank Bruno was a, or still is, um, uh, an English boxer. Well, he's not a boxer anymore, but... Uh, it was pretty popular back in the day. Um, and this collection has 10 games in total. Uh, so we will only be seeing 5. The ones that we will not be seeing is Betty, which is an awesome game. Uh, one of my favorite games on the Commodore 64. It's an Arkanoid clone. Uh, has a really cool two player option. Unfortunately, that one is gone. Uh, there is also Commando, unfortunately, also a really cool game, but we will not be seeing that one. Uh, has a really catching sit tune, by the way. Bomb Jack, also a decent-ish game, never been my favorite, but it's, it's an okay port of the arcade game. Uh, which one was missing? Uh, Scooby-Doo. So also, which I, f I believe, I don't remember exactly, I think you actually play as Scrappy-Doo in that. Uh, not the best game ever, but, you know, it was something. Uh, and Battleship, which is just Battleships. Uh, but, it was still a pretty good game. Uh, just, just a good... Good, good game of battleship against the computer or a human player where you just have to send someone out of the room for a moment as you set up the board. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that was still kind of kind of cool. Um, yeah, it's kind of it's so annoying, you know, when you go back to your collection and then you uh, notice that something had went uh, something went wrong. Um, and I went through all of my other collection boxes to see if I maybe had put it in there, but I had not found it anywhere yet. So kind of bummed out about that because again, this was this is one of my favorite uh, collections back then. And those collections are quite fun because you have just multiple games uh, in one box. So they were also, you know, they were a bit more expensive maybe, uh, but you got more games for them. So it was cool. And it was Uridium. And let's go for the next one. Now, I, I'm not, I don't remember uh, which game is first. This is also a giant tape, by the way. I'm not sure if you can actually see it um, uh, like this. But this is like an hour tape or something. Um, see if I can actually show that. With the power of light. Is that actually working? I don't know. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's a giant tape. So I was kind of hoping like maybe it's on one tape, but uh, nah. Nah. Let's uh, do the counter back. Let's uh, load it and see uh, which is the first one, which I don't actually remember. And perhaps we should, uh, should give Griso a little treat, why don't we? You know, would be nice to have the old grumpy cat thing over. I don't, I'm not actually sure where he is. <laughs> uh, oh, 1942. That's a... Uh, <laughs> I'm actually pressing control on my own keyboard. That's not working. Here he comes. Uh, and those small uh, noises you got there it sounds a bit like modem noises. Uh, that's basically also what you get when you insert a tape like this in a normal tape deck. And it's kind of unusual that they actually um, 
that you hear something like that un upon actual loading. There he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, not my finger. I know you like fresh meat, but come on. Yo. There you go, buddy. Uh, I hope this is actually loading because we don't see anything. Uh, there should be a... I think 1942 actually has a screen. Not my finger, dude. Ah, there we go. So it is loading perfectly fine. And that black screen is also uh, sometimes a bit of a concern. Hey there, Wouter. How are you doing? Great to see you. Uh, we are uh, doing great here. Uh, well, kinda. <laughs> Just played some Uridium. That was great. Also played a game that... Uh, I don't know, you might be into it. Uh, it's more of a strategy game, but uh, we didn't, uh, we couldn't get it loaded. So, um, unfortunately, we didn't see that. And currently, we are uh, playing through half of uh, Frank Bruno's Big Box. And I have woken up Grizzo now, so he's going to be trying to get more treats now. That's great. <laughs> You only get the one now. Maybe you get some more later, huh? He's never full, so, you know. I can keep giving him, but... Uh, it's like a bottomless pit, that one. <laughs> uh, Frank Bruno's boxing is one of the games in the box. Uh, but uh, someone paid some money to put his name on a big box. That's, that's basically it. Um, but yeah, his boxing game is also in there. Which I don't actually remember if it's any good. <laughs> yeah, the perfect opportunists they are indeed. Uh, and this one is, is full of shenanigans um, getting more treats and such. And uh, unfortunately it sometimes works, especially when parents are over. Uh, you know how cats are. And... Especially uh, with my father. Stuff always accidentally drops. Yeah, knowing that back then the celebs didn't get all that much for these kind of deals like nowadays. Uh, so I doubt they, he got a whole lot out of it. Uh, to be fair. Not really sure if uh, what he's he's up to now. I know he was a big uh, proponent for, uh, uh, you know, giving attention to mental health. Uh, but even that was like, what, 15 years ago where that uh, was, was, was in play? Where he suffered quite a um, bit of a breakdown himself. And, you know, clawed up out of that for a bit and then became a, uh, a big speaker for it. I think we're almost loaded. Oh, not yet. Okay. Uh, I think 1942 is uh, also having quite a nice bit of sit tunes in there. Um, what's interesting is, like... <laughs> Other people, uh, you know, m are most familiar, especially in America, are most familiar with home consoles, the NES, and that 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 version is so butchered. <laughs> the Commodore sixty four version is actually quite neat. Uh, it's a, it's a quite a good conversion of the arcade game, if I remember correctly. Um, Problem for now is that I believe you can do the, uh, the, the, what's it even called? Like when you would do the loop the loop. It's uh, by pressing space, and space, of course, is now not very convenient. So I'll just do without the old uh, um, 
the whole maneuver. I'm not sure what it's called. Probably not a barrel roll. Or is it? I don't know. Uh, but yeah, some some cue music here. Uh, let's uh, let's play. I don't. Uh, I don't need no invincibility time. I can just go through it uh, like this. <laughs> First freaking bullet. Second freaking bullet. Catch them all, Seb. Catch them all. Oh wait, it's a different franchise. <laughs> But yeah, this is also a game that actually has uh, uh, audio and uh, sound effects, like music and sound effects, what I wanted to say. Uh, for a very early game, already dead, which wasn't too common, like later games they did more often, but the more earlier games, uh, it, it wasn't too common. Uh, let's see if I actually can get to stage uh, 24 or uh, 3. I used to be quite decent at this game, but, uh, you know, I've played this in years. It's just a uh, very good game in uh, in general, like, uh, it's a decent conversion, I find. I mean, yeah, the arcade game is better, I'm not falling for that one again. Did fall for that one again. <laughs> Kind of mean if they uh, come from the back, isn't it? I was... Yeah, and then there is this music, I also remember, like, this is a... Uh... It's a bit of a mood change, isn't it, this music? <laughs> and it has some really weird symbols. Like an ink, and heart. And odd. It's uh, also kind of weird that uh, uh, 1942 has this weird system where you are actually counting down stages. Like it doesn't matter any anything or... Oh crap! I was expecting the red planes. It's just weird that you start at the highest stage and you are counting downwards. Gamer brains aren't uh, aren't wired to accept that, you know. Oh, there's the big plane again. Ah, oh, man. So close, yet so far. Uh, how did I get that one? Good boy. Oh! Yeah, so, you know, in those cases, the spacebar would come in handy. Uh, especially if you emulate this and you add a second button that is tied to uh, space. This game becomes a lot easier because you have that loop-the-loop. Uh, -loop, uh, which gives you a bit of uh, uh, invulnerability frames. Uh, like this, you know, as you do the loop-the-loop. -loop, you are invulnerable, so that uh, that gives you a strategic advantage. But if you are playing with a joystick, it's it's just not very practical. Even if the uh, keyboard is right in front of you, because well, oh yeah, those guys come from be behind. Uh, you know, it, it's such a fast-paced game. You just don't have the time to. Press the space bar. Uh, I know some people what they did it was uh, place the um, uh, keyboard on the floor and just uh, uh, hit space with their uh, with their foot, you know, like a pedal, <laughs> which uh, can work, I suppose. <laughs> I mean, why not? <laughs> as long as you clean the thing. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, uh, especially through emulation nowadays, it's, uh, it's it's easy to just bind the key to an extra button. And that makes the game so much more playable. Whoa, damn it, why did I do that? It's 
straight in the face. Man, I can't even get to the second stage anymore. That's unfortunate. I've grown all rusty. Big surprise. Man, I won that second stage. <laughs> But yeah, this uh, this game just plays well. Um, like this box wasn't uh, my favorite for uh, you know no reason. It, it it's just fun. Uh... Is there any are there any stinkers in this uh, box actually? Mm, I don't know. As I said, I don't remember uh, uh, Bruno's boxing uh, actually. So we'll be uh, seeing what that is actually like. Um, not a big boxing fan in general, so you know, I wasn't too into it back then. No, uh, about time. I'm playing this on the uh, uh, original C64, uh, or well, the C64C. Uh, it's like the, the second version of the Commodore 64, right? Uh, but yeah, the. The one that I had as a kid. Well, actually, no. This was my... I think this was the one uh, of my uncle's. Because mine got fried, unfortunately. Okay. One more try. Uh, so I am actually loading them on the actual tapes. Yeah, I do have a space bar, but it's all the way over here. So I can't very easily reach it. Uh, and my cables are a bit too short to actually place it in a more convenient location. But as I say, even then, this game is too fast paced for me to really make use of it uh, anyway. Yeah, you definitely need a third arm for this one. What I also, uh, what we also used to do was just, um, you know, have a second uh, person do the space bar which uh, can also work and of course you get into big fights that it wasn't on time ah damn it <laughs> it is called rolls is it a barrel roll like the loop the loop I'm not much of a uh, aviation person, so I don't really know the terms all too well that go there. Wow, we actually avoid it. Yeah, finally! Woo! Yeah, okay, well, you know, we, uh, we passed the first stage. <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> Probably not gonna get much further now. Whoa. Yeah, I think it's a loop. Um. Ugh. But I, I also don't know what a roll is exactly, uh, because, uh, you know, we all know uh, do the barrel roll thing from Star, uh, or Star Wing, I want to say, um, Star Fox in the US. Uh, but we keep hearing, that's not actually a barrel roll, so I don't know what, what, what is what anymore. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this was uh, 1942, awesome game, I love this stuff, uh, really, really cool one. Um, but... Uh, uh, this is one of those games that doesn't let you reset, so there you go. Let's uh, move on to the next one. And I think there is another one on this side. And I'm not sure which one that is, but we'll see. This box basically only has, um, well, pretty well-known games. <laughs> Um, it's, it's all good games, that's for sure. Uh, well, all? 
Oh, man, not all. <laughs> There's one here. That is actually why I uh, got this box out. Uh, because uh, Ginger Hippie Gaming was... Uh, ooh, another Capcom classic on the 64, uh, C64. Uh, but yeah, uh, Ginger Hippie Gaming was actually playing the um, Spectrum version. And I remembered I have a Commodore 64 uh, version of what he was playing on the Spectrum. So we will be checking that out and it's not as great. I don't remember what the boxing, uh, what 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 Frank Bruno's boxing is like. So uh, we will have to rediscover that uh, together. I I just don't remember. Um, I I don't think it's like Punch Out, but I I just don't remember. I I I don't seem to remember a uh, Punch Out like game on the Commodore sixty four that I owned. I know there are some out there. I just don't remember it's uh i mean i haven't i haven't played these these cassettes in well over 25 years so uh quite a lot of them i own but i don't know any anything about them anymore it's uh quite a new discovery again hey there mr grim great to have you around as always hope you're doing well Uh, I did play this one uh, during the uh, Halloween stream I did, uh, but I did play that on the uh, via an SD card. So now uh, we are actually just loading the tape itself that I own. Never, uh, never played the Punch Out port for the Commodore sixty four, so uh, it's uh, good to know about it. Uh, I should check it out sometimes. Punch Out is uh, is a great game. Ghosts and Goblins for the C sixty four. It's a uh, it's a pretty interesting port. Um, I like it. It's one of my favorite uh, eight bit conversions of the game for sure, uh, but it's not a very Arcade accurate port. Um, but what I like about it is they use the limitations of the Commodore 64 and just build along with it, around it, and uh, it really works well. And and this, the sit tune for this is just legendary, isn't it? Uh, if you if you don't know this sit tune, then definitely check it out and and look it up on YouTube because it's quite long. Uh, it only has one track. That's uh, that's a bit of a disadvantage, <laughs> and and the big issue with this one uh, is it it has such awesome music, uh, but then uh, you barely hear very much of it because as soon as you die, it resets itself. So <laughs> knowing ghosts and goblins, uh, you don't get very far into the track, unfortunately. But it is an absolute banger of a uh, of a sit tune. Um, and the uh, the sequel actually also has really good music, and that has more tracks. Uh, and that one has actually some really neat, like almost weather effect sound effects woven into the soundtrack. It's really cool. And I think this one is uh, from the legendary Rob Hubert. Uh, this track. And yeah, the, the levels are just a bit different, uh, especially starting at the second stage. It's not very arcade accurate anymore, uh, but it, it plays okay and it looks just great. Uh, not sure if I've seen that uh, compar uh, comparison. I think overall my favorite port, like actually that comes very close to the arcade, is the NES version. Uh, but it is, uh, you know, every version just kicks your ass, doesn't it? <laughs> Never checked out the Master System one, and the Mega Drive version is... Uh, was it the Mega Drive version more fleshed out. Uh, it's been a long, long time. Um, well, wasn't that like kind of a mashup between Ghosts and Goblins and Super 
uh, ghouls and ghosts or super ghosts and goblins. Damn it, those names, they always just a G and T. A shop mechanic in a ghosts and goblins game? I've never, I've never tried it. Uh, Cur Cursed Castilla? No, uh, Wouter, I've never heard of that one. Is that on the Commodore? Doesn't ring a bell, at least. Oh boy. I've never heard of it, uh, Wouter. I will. Uh, I will need to check it out. What is it like, uh, Ghouls and Ghosts? Sir? Hey there, Izzy. Thank you very much for taking care of the chat. Uh, much appreciated. Hmm, uh, oh cool, I've never seen that, so I will need to check it out. Yeah, Demon World in Japan, I did know, uh, I did hear that now that you mention it, uh, not that I remembered it, so. <laughs> uh, anyway, let's, uh, let's see if I can actually beat the first stage, uh, which would be a miracle, by the way. All right, um, because uh, the problem this game has, uh, you know, most uh, C64 versions uh, of games have this issue. <laughs> it's that uh, to jump, you actually need to press up. Oh no, I did not want to pick up the freaking... Damn it. And with that, the freaking torch is terrible. Because it's an arcing shot and it... Uh. But yeah, the the issue... Is, oh, that's a dagger. That's also pretty bad. But I didn't even know that it was in there. Um, but uh, the, the issue with this version is that you have to press up to jump. And that's just, uh, that's just never a fun time, is it? Um. Oh, crap. There we go. Uh, I, I find it especially difficult to make a jump forward, and those flowers suck because they shoot you. And ah, damn it! Don't come up in front of me, Mr. Zombo. So uh, I'm not actually sure if there's any other weapons in this game, like the shield. I'm not sure if it's in here. Rup. Rup. Ah, man, it came right in front or uh, underneath me. Um, damn it. Can't even make it to Firebrand. And uh, there we go. Didn't want to jump there. There's two versions, uh, Izzy? Of, uh, of, th of this one or a later uh, game in the franchise? Uh, but yeah, in, in general, in general, just stick with the original weapon, the first weapon. Uh, I don't think I have disabled the uh, uh, possibility of links. But then again, I'm, I'm I was too greedy for the freaking bag, man. I can't even get through to Firebrand here. What What's that about? <laughs> On the Halloween, I actually beat the level uh, once. Uh, but yeah, it's so difficult. Uh, but yeah, I don't think I have disabled the... And there we go. Disabled the possibility of posting links. But uh, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, like always, I don't really have uh, any clue what the heck I'm doing. So Maybe I messed up there. No. <laughs> I couldn't shoot fast enough. Man! Uh, I think in the original the dagger does come out a bit faster 
than the lens, but in this version it doesn't seem to work as well. Uh, but also I'm, I'm not sure if they actually do less damage. <laughs> and as you can hear, every time you die the music resets, so you know, uh, quite familiar with the first bit of the song. <laughs> Okay, come on. This is uh, this this is starting to be embarrassing. You know, a state I am very much used to, but uh... <laughs> And I think in the original the torch does actually do more damage, but because it's uh, such a short arcing shot, it's just generally not very wise to use it. There we go. I'm not even going to bother with that. Uh... Screw you, Zombo. Uh, just let the birdie fry. There we go. Whoa! I did not expect him to respawn. And here's Firebrand. Just spam your shot and hopefully you kill him just in time. There we go, and this is a checkpoint, I do believe. Okay, so the firebrand, uh, that is too different. Ooh. Yeah, I've made uh, like 25 gra graves already, I think. Damn it. Uh, but yeah, they, I agree, that does save a lot of time. Uh, this is quite mean, like they spawn you right in front of that uh, shooting flower. Like what the heck game. Oh man, all these ghosts are going to be a problem. Yeah, go away. Yeah. Uh, preferably you don't have as many ghosts on screen, but... Uh, Die, 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 die. Die, die. Ah, man. And straight in the hole. <laughs> that's why that's so mean. Yeah, sure, Sep. Jump straight in the hole. <laughs> the flower didn't, uh, didn't do that one. Oh, well. But yeah, as you uh, can see, it, it is a very competent game. Uh, not... Totally arcade accurate, but just a very good game, and it's taking the limitations of the Commodore 64 uh, into consideration and just makes a uh, you know good version that you can recognize and plays well. Like, uh, there's plenty of versions that have this major slowdown. Yeah, but it would be kind of embarrassing uh, to, to die in a graveyard, isn't it? Okay, let's see. If we can do this... Uh... Ah, damn it. Uh, not familiar with that game, is he? <laughs> You're always pulling out the uh, most obscure things, man. <laughs> No. Keep forgetting that freaking shot. Oh man, it's so... You're just not fast enough to really get away from these uh, uh, ghosties in time. And that's the one uh, difference from, for example, the uh, the NES and even the arcade version. You can manage these ghosts a bit better, where they are not spawning like so numerously as the bosses here, because that is really what makes it uh, difficult. Uh, like Japanese exclusive? Man.
Hey there, Scott. Great to see you. Thank you very much for joining us. Hope you are doing well. Yeah, I would love to see that video. That would be cool. Those, uh, because those joysticks, they are such a barrier for people getting into CDI. Um, because those, those original things, they are just ridiculously expensive nowadays. Like 50, 50 bucks if you're lucky. For like one of those flimsy remote things. And an actual gamepad. And with that? No. So yeah, having uh, uh, more access to controllers and options to mod them uh, or mod uh, other controller types in there, uh, that would be so much appreciated and the community would be very thankful for any, um, you know, the way uh, to make that easier. Because having the C or the uh, CDI and not a... Um, Ah, damn it. <laughs> uh, what's the Toshiba? Is that... Uh... It's also a... Yeah, I couldn't make that one. It's also a C60 or a... Uh... <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so in C64 mode right now. Is it also a CDI? Man! <laughs> But there's been so many uh, CDI versions uh, of brands. Hey there, Ben. How are you? How are you doing this evening? Hope you're uh, fine. And great to see you. Ah, okay. <laughs> I have two uh, uh, Toshiba. Oh crap! Don't stop! Damn it! <laughs> Don't stop to talk, except when you are spawned before a bullet. <laughs> um, I also have two uh, uh, Toshibas from back when I went to school. Uh, what are they? I think one is a... They were both from the satellite uh, uh, lines. And one was, uh, you know, a bit older with Windows 98. And the other was, I, th I, I, I think, the Satellite Pro 6000, is that is that a thing? I don't remember. It had Windows 2000 or XP. And it served me quite nicely in school with some games. I mean, you know, to, uh, to read the stuff and learn the stuff and play games, basically. <laughs> It's this one advantage you have when you... Uh, well, there's multiple, actually. Uh, but one of the great advantages of actually having a disability... Uh, you have these... Uh, um, ways to, you know, help you in school. And you get these expensive laptops... Uh, to help you out. And yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> you know, it's not all bad having a disability. Although, uh, this week I did, uh, I did get quite annoyed, bloody. Uh, this is the hardest game in the world. It is, it is me, that's for sure. That's for sure. But yeah, I also have a way to, you know, have a taxi uh, for um, where it's not too expensive, but, you know, to get around. No, don't! <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I can uh, always, uh, you know, count on, on if I need to get somewhere that I actually can get somewhere because I can't obviously drive a car. Or maybe I can, but I wouldn't be around if I do. Yeah, they all do. Uh, although I don't... I'm not actually sure if this one uh, makes you play through the game twice. Uh, 
I never managed to actually get through it once, so... <laughs> I think this one actually does not. Yeah, uh, I think uh, I think it was Google. They uh, they tested it out. Uh, self self driving cars. They tested it out. They just blind put a uh, blind person in one. Uh, you know, you can spare those, I suppose. <laughs> and uh, and and it actually worked. So that would be awesome. But it would uh, it, it'll be some years before that would actually be a possibility. Ugh. This is why the uh, uh, the fireball sucks, or the torch, I should say. Because look, I can't reach that freaking flower now. For some reason, it's going straight through him. Yeah, don't use the torch. The torch is just terrible. Just stick with the lens. Uh, but yeah, I don't think this game has you go through the game twice, only once, but even that is quite difficult. Uh, but most other versions do. Yeah, this, this game just isn't very uh, arcade accurate. It doesn't need to be. But it does have uh, amazing... An amazing uh, uh, soundtrack here, like this sit tune here. It's the only one that's in the game. Well, the the high score table, there is also one, but this sit tune is amazing. <laughs> hey, the ligament, uh, great to have you, and uh, yeah, thank you for checking out that uh, that let's play. That was so much fun to make with people. Uh, really cool stuff. Uh, but yeah, if you if you have the chance, then check out uh, Ghosts and Goblins. Sit, uh, just put it in YouTube, and it is amazing. Anyway, we uh, we will check it out. Yeah, but what was so to get back to my story? I have this like this this option of a taxi. I mean, I do need to pay for it, but it's just as much as public transport. But public transport is not always as easy for me to use, especially uh, lately. I can't use it as much. But now I need to... I, I used to be able to just get that and just go wherever I wanted. And all of a sudden they call me up and, uh, yeah, we need to prolong your uh, arrangement. Do you want it again? And yeah, of course I want it again. Why do I need to? It's not like I, I will improve. Yeah, we need to check that your... Um, we need to make sure that your situation hasn't changed. Well, I'm not gonna find new eyes now, am I? <laughs> but anyway, uh, so they go uh, like, oh, okay, well, we see in the last few years you haven't traveled as much. Like, yeah, no shit. Uh, it's been... Uh, it's not really been that uh, that great to go out now, isn't it? So, uh, yeah, uh, you probably don't need it that, mu that much anymore. Like, what? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, they're probably going to take that away a bit. I hate bureaucracy, man. I hate bureaucracy. And they're like, yeah, you can, you can still, uh, if you want to pick some activity up again, you can just ask for it again, and then we can add it where you have to go through the process again. Uh, but also... It's already taking too long because now this month uh, I had to actually cancel a, a thing we were going to because I don't have my cabs anymore. Uh, because they take too long into arranging it. Super annoying, man. I hate bureaucracy, uh, especially if it's not needed. But oh well, that, uh, that little tangent. <laughs> Overall... In the Netherlands, we are very, very lucky with the help that we can get. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm not complaining too much, but especially the bureaucracy is just... Uh, so frustrating at times. It's like a brick wall. Uh, and yeah, uh, Mr. Grimm... Uh, they keep making that easier and easier as well. I, I'm... Like assistant dying, I'm, I'm kind of... On the fence on that. 
it, it just it is it, i think that is something with a lot of things that the option should be there but it should not be normal it should be very much um it, it, it just it, it should never get to a way like uh like futurama where you just step into the booth <laughs> uh no that's just something very much you know uh have a psy psychiatric uh, evaluation that if that is indeed the only way out for that person like the, i can imagine some ways where that can be a a you know something that someone is actually choosing for that but uh yeah normalizing that stuff is not something we should have to but uh that's just me yeah i agree you should uh you should certainly uh, you know, just find ways to that people can have uh, a a well a life in general. And we should really uh, help people achieve that. Just have a a life that is you know, good for them, which can be very different from the norm. I think we uh, actually need to go to the side B here, although it is for, uh, still pretty long. Hmm. Yeah, it's still pretty long. Mm -hmm. Kind of worried now that I missed the game. Oh well. Uh, if there's not three games on the other side, then uh, we still have one left on this one. Yeah, pff, basic income is also one of those uh, things, isn't it? Um, don't want to get uh, too political, I suppose, but, uh, you know, basic income sounds nice, but it also could be uh, a bit problematic. Because with basic income, you also, you know, there's always going to be people who will not have that. So you just lower the zero point in that way, uh, I, I think. Um... Uh, yeah, that Dutch guy. We uh, yeah, we at least we have video games to keep us busy. That's great. Uh, because man, some of the news is just uh, so annoying. Uh, so sometimes it's great to just escape. Uh, Scott, what what videos do I have for the CDI? Uh, phew, I don't really know. I, I have a lot of them. Um, but I I don't tend to. I've never been a big fan of VCDs, uh, they're just a bit of a, uh, a hassle, uh, but you know, when you pick up some CDI stuff, you generally have some, uh, some, some movies in there. Uh, I think I've like, uh, Top Gun like five times or something ridiculous, because that one seems to be always in there. Um, the one movie I actually bought, I remember, or I'm not sure if I bought it, or it was like a deal where... You could get one uh, with a game I got. I'm not entirely sure, but that was uh, Bot 21, uh, which is a pretty cool movie. Um, remember watching that one uh, in video CD version uh, form in uh, with my grandmother. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I think that was the only one I actually bought. Um, but any VCD just works well on the CDI, so you know, what is even a, a CDI movie? Uh, it's every VCD, and in that regard, like, so many VCDs came out. And yeah, uh, this is Airwolf. This was actually the game that uh, Ginger Hippie Gaming was playing. Uh, he was playing the Spectrum version, which looked dreadful. Uh, and th I remembered that I had this game, and this is why I actually... <laughs> Uh, found this pack like I, I remember I had it uh, and yeah turned out to be this one and this is I think the one dirt in this whole collection Airwolf is not a great game on here um, and is he uh, is the Famicom version do is that is that the same as the NES version or was a uh, there a different uh, version also in Japan where did they have two versions I only know the NES version of Airwolf 
uh, which I do remember enjoying, but it's also... <laughs> it's not too special, like you can just... It, it's, it's real easy. Yeah, I, I thought as much. I thought there was a different version. I never played the uh, uh, the Famicom version, I'm afraid. Uh, CDI also has some uh, CDs where you have to input a code. Uh, <laughs> if that tells you enough. <laughs> uh, it has some naughty, uh, naughty CDIs as well. Uh, and, and most of the times these codes... Like, you know, dev developers were taking the piss. Like, the code is uh, 6969. <laughs> uh, like, you could actually change the code, you know, to make it your own. But uh, it's like... Like, kids do not know how to erase data from a CDI. Like, come on. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there's... Uh, uh, there is... I think there's actually two strip poker games on CDI. I have one. Uh, there is a game called Uncovering Tatjana, where is a, uh, a Tatjana is a model from the Netherlands here, um, and that game is basically kicks with uh, with with her hot pictures. <laughs> uh, and uh, I also on one stream I showed not actually the uh, uh, the. the <laughs> I, I didn't actually show the content, but there was a disc. There's different discs, actually. There's the Joy of Sex. And there is a Dutch game. Um, well, not game. But a Dutch instru instructional uh, disc about, uh, you know, just having sex. And, uh, you know, it's just intended to sit down as a couple. And uh, just uh, learn how you, um, how you get a stiff. <laughs> and... That, that stuff is, is not censored at all. And um, uh, that that's very very true. In the Netherlands, we are not very uh, we're not very prude. We just uh, we we enjoy our sex. <laughs> so nudist stuff is uh, is pretty 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 normal or was like it has become a bit less so but uh, oh well Dutch movies always have to the, uh, um, the sex well everyone enjoys sex but we just aren't embarrassed about it <laughs> anyway let's uh, Let's see if we can actually get somewhere in here, which uh, probably the big answer is to that is no. Uh, because this game is... Uh... The, the problem with this game, I already remembered, is that you are constantly descending. You can't go through there, I suppose. Uh, so, <laughs> this makes... Can we actually kill that thing? No, we can't. Okay, so we... Need to go through here. How do we? How do we actually get somewhere? Oh no! Don't you can't land there. Uh, how do we? Uh, how do we? How do we open the door? Great! First section of the screen, and we're already dead. Yeah, the dish can be nice. <laughs> But it can also be assholes. Uh, we are kind of known uh, to be direct, uh, which not everyone is. Uh... Not everyone likes a direct. Uh, okay, I, I guess we needed to shoot. But look, we keep descending here, so. It's, it's near impossible to actually align yourself and get through here unscathed. Uh, oh crap. There we go. Wow, those balls are... <laughs> uh, they are instant death. Okay, good to know. Yeah, but I remember when I went to uh, to the US, it, it, it did... You know, I also noticed like it is it is a bit different. Um, 
in how people react. It to me, as a Dutch guy, it felt damn it. It felt very fake at times. Uh, but yeah, in the Netherlands, you're, you you don't have to be surprised if you ask someone. If someone does uh, ask, how does this look on me, and it it looks a crap, they will tell you. <laughs> no. Oh come on. Uh, ah man, instant death. Damn it. <laughs> So, as I was seeing on the Spectrum version, which I also had never seen, the, the thing that I noticed that I, that this game actually does better is that uh, on the Spectrum, it seems uh, it it seems like on the Spectrum it it will have flip screens. Damn it! I don't know when. Uh, never been to uh, to to Canada or uh, had more much interaction with them. Uh, you know, I'm just mostly familiar with what the Americans say, and that's that the Americans are very nice, or the Can Canadian people <laughs> overly nice. So, uh, which I kind of can get why you would uh, say like that's even more fake. Killed by balls. This doesn't look like uh, the awesome. 80s airwolf here getting kills by a freaking ping pong ball. Open the door. <laughs> uh. Hey there, Dennis. Good evening. Hope you're doing well. Who would I like to meet at a Comic Con? Oh man. You know, I've I've never been to a uh, Comic Con. Uh, and uh, you know, I'm I'm not really a um, uh, a celebrity person anyway. So I'm I'm just fine meeting people in general, um, and the more successful someone comes, the less interested I tend to be. Actually, you know, I I can admire people who have uh, who have success, but um, yeah, it, it kind of also has to do with that fakeness, I guess. Uh, again, uh, do I know any celebs who are ah, damn it! But I guess, you know, who would I like to meet most? Probably maybe voice actors, uh, because, you know, I'm just... I find it fun to, to... I mean, I'm by no means a voice actor or anything, but... You know, there would be something fun to, to learn that. Um, and just learn how they are doing that and... How to actually control your voice and such, but yeah, that, that's basically how I work. I. <laughs> In meeting people, I just want to learn from people, uh, <laughs> and that's not uh, something you actually do on a convention. Again, I've never been to a convention. Oh wait, you can actually shoot down. That's cool. I'm not safe. No, damn it, man, those balls! <laughs> I promise, Ben, we have moved on from the XX export. Uh, Red Dwarf is one of those uh, series I never actually checked out. It's one of those series that I no doubt will like, but I never checked it out. Yeah, the young ones, awesome bottom. Uh, Shame that, uh, shame, shame he died indeed. Much too young. Uh, but yeah, those were awesome series. Love that stuff. Uh, 
not really the same, but CDI does have some uh, Monty Python uh, uh, titles, by the way. Uh, most of them are just like free CDs of some uh, of, of, of their skits, but there is one game. Uh, I think it's also on PC. I I don't remember it as much because, uh, well, unsurprisingly, it made no sense. <laughs> no, damn it. I wonder, can you actually go down there? Where those balls are? Let's, uh, let's test it out. Yes, you can. Damn it! <laughs> Man, how are... I, I'm not sure if anyone has ever made it uh, this far. Yeah, I, I don't even know the name of the game anymore. I think it was Planet, Pla something of Escape from Planet. What? I don't know. Let's just go over here. What the heck is this? Is it like a switch? And how? This is just terrible. Uh. Yeah, that is the one, uh, Scott, indeed. I haven't checked that out in years because I didn't understand the freaking thing that was happening in there. <laughs> it was it was real zany, you know, as expected, I suppose. Go through. Mm. I wonder if there, if there is a, uh, a long play of this game. Probably someone. Someone probably managed to have enough patience to go through here. Okay. Uh, is that dude stuck? <laughs> you know what? We're moving on to the next game because my goodness, this is just way too difficult. This is one of those games that does not want to reset. It doesn't even want to reset the game, it just crashes. Awesome! Even that it can't do right. Oh boy. <laughs> let's, uh, let's check out the next game. Are you relaxing well, Griso? Yeah, Airwolf sucks. It's the one dirt in this whole collection, I think. Here's Bruno's boxing. Frank Bruno's boxing. Oh, yeah, actually, you see. <laughs> I keep doing that where I press the key on my actual keyboard and not on the corner 64. That ain't doing much. <laughs> uh, and this one, I don't remember. Frank Bruno's boxing. Which ones are... Also, oh, I do remember this screen actually. Cool little uh, sit, sit tune. I had a cat that uh, used to lay on your in your neck. Um, was actually I had them together with this one. Uh, unfortunately, he died. Uh, but yeah, he, he would just climb up and then lay like a um, what's it called, like scarf. <laughs> In your neck, which uh, was quite nice in uh, in winter. <laughs> and this one, uh, this one's just like jelly. Uh, well, Mr. Grimm, uh, I, I'm not really sure if I'm the right to uh, the right person to answer that. It's uh, it, it it's kind of contested as well, I suppose. Um. But the church in general is very much a dying breed here in the Netherlands. So, um, yeah, uh, you don't see that many Protestants anywhere. At least in my area, because I live in the big city. So it's, it, you know, um, 
it's very rare and it doesn't come up as often and um, uh, you do notice that progressives, uh, progressivism and, and, and the old traditions they do clash nowadays and mostly uh, in regards to uh, imperialism of course and the old slavery and such um, the Netherlands is about to make excuses for their role in slavery um, and you see there is a bit of uh, yeah, there is a bit of a clash nowadays between between uh, progressives and and uh, conservatives here as well uh, unfortunately uh, it's always a shame when people can't think uh, get along and just you know you get these 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 people who are starting to to die on these hills where they, they, no one really agrees anymore you know most people are 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 fine meeting somewhere in the middle but uh yeah you are starting to fight for the extremes and then no one is uh, is happy anymore kind of a shame and uh we are much like american uh, america like that where we start to form those extremes and it's unfortunate to see so you see smaller uh, smaller villages in the, for for sure um, just like the suburbs in America that are really fighting for tradition now and the cities that are way more progressive uh, yeah they do form opposite sides And it sucks uh, because you know what the big downside is. I I grew up in the big city, so over here uh, the Netherlands is also kind of known for. If we take gay rights uh, for uh, in particular, uh, they've always always been rather progressive in that regard. Uh, you know, uh, gay marriage and such. But even before that, uh, in the big city where I grew up. I've always known uh, about gay people and they've always been seen as like something that's normal. Um, you know, it, 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 it was just normal to hear that someone was gay and no one had a problem with it. With it. And yes, yeah, sure, some, sometimes someone did make uh, nasty remarks, of course. Um, what I find really annoying is that now you have... Now you start having these extremes and... I would say that tolerance in the Netherlands has actually gone down uh, over the years than it was actually in the 90s and that is just, I don't know, and it's just disgusting. And that just has to do with you, yeah, you know, you only hear those extremes as either or you are totally for or you are totally against and there is no middle ground anymore. So what was once more normal has now become abnormal and that's just a shame. Uh, anyway, let's see uh, what we can do here with some boxing. Oh wow, it is like uh, punch out. Wow, oh, you were right. This is uh, oh my goodness. This is not even. This is not even a bit. This is just a straight up rip off. How do we? It sounded like a bit the, ti uh, the eye of the tiger, wasn't it? Yeah, like Rocky. Like, I don't know how to start. <laughs> this is just a straight up uh, uh, rip off here. And yeah, this is the eye of the tiger. At least inspired by it. How do we start? How do we start? This tune I don't recognize. But how do we freaking start? Wait, maybe it's enter. No, it's not enter. F1, F2, no, no. Uh, of course. Also possible. Change controller port. I don't think I am doing something, no. 
Uh, come on, man. How do we start? So look for two. Okay. Uh, A. Replay boxer to load new boxer. L. Or A. Come on. L. L is not doing anything. Man. No wonder I forgot what this game was like. You can't play the bastard. <laughs> I'm just pushing every button now. Look. L. There we go. Why was it working before? Uh, start tape. Oh crap, is it one where you have to load further? Start tape, wait. Crazy. Alright. There we go. Uh, this is kind of weird because it, it loaded the demo, you saw the game play. Why does it need to load? Yeah, don't remember this game at all, and uh, I'm starting to see why. I'm out of beer. But it's definitely one of the things that uh, I think we can be most proud of in the Netherlands, that we are so accepting in general of different views, or at least we were. It's just a shame that that kind of seems to have gone around. Uh, I was drinking a beer uh, called Mo Money from Tiny Rebel. Uh, it's showing. I don't know. There we go. Uh, there we go. Uh, there. Mo Money! Typical. <laughs> uh, it was pretty good but now it's done it's empty oh well nothing lasts forever and uh, I'm too lazy to get a new one uh, because I got a glass of water yeah and and, and, and you know let, let to be honest it's just my Opinion, of course, so... Alright, let's see. Uh, that's Dutch. Uh, there's a block. Ouch. But how do we punch? I mean, punching is important too, you know? I can't punch. Damn it! Oh no! Are you kidding me? <laughs> uh... Damn it. Uh, yeah, this is not working, but uh, we see it's a rip off of uh, Punch Out. Uh, I don't drink a whole lot. Um, I'm very much a social drinker. Uh, I never drink alone. I used to drink more, you know, with uh, when I still went to school because what 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 else are you to do, right? <laughs> yeah, that was uh, very much bear hugger. It was just a very lazy ripoff. Let's see if we can uh, find another game on here. Uh, there should still be uh, one or two. Uh, we still have saboteur to find. And let's see, Betty is not here, those are not here. I think we are just missing Saboteur. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Grizo. <laughs> so hopefully it's behind here.
Yeah, I used to drink so much, uh, like, uh, but let's just say that I did, I, I have woken up somewhere in the middle of the street uh, uh, before. <laughs> Uh, but uh, yeah, those uh, those days have long gone. Uh, now, if I take one or two drinks, uh, it's basically my body says, uh, "Buddy, perhaps it's time to stop." <laughs> uh, so you know, <laughs> I used to be able to to take that stuff quite nicely, but uh, that that has uh, yeah, that ability has long gone. Uh, probably for the better. <laughs> uh, you know, it's kind of Dutch culture as well, I suppose. It's very common here for 14-year-olds uh, to drink themselves stupid, unfortunately. Um, first beer I ever had was uh, when I was five, believe it or not. Well, and with beer, I mean like a just a sip. Uh, you know, I was just like, what's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? And my aunt was just like, fine, take it. Uh, didn't drink a beer for 10 more years because it was disgusting. <laughs> so I guess it helped. <laughs> Did it find it? Uh, I'm not sure what it found. Yeah, not nothing. Yeah, prices are completely nuts nowadays. I do still enjoy sometimes uh, when I have people over. I do like uh, some mixing some drinks as well. You know, they make a nice cocktail. Uh, just fun. Don't do that as much anymore either. Uh, partly because, you know, I can't take it as much. Partly because uh, my wrists are kind of crap nowadays. So shaking is not that great. Uh, you know, and I would like to also enjoy a drink. Not be tired and too tired to actually make the, the thing for my own one. <laughs> uh... But you know, a nice cocktail now and then, still, uh, still pretty cool. Uh, let's see if we can find that spot again if it loads now. So I'm not sure why it found nothing. But yeah, probably uh, it is. Uh, it is probably better, Scott, to uh, spend money on things you can, you know, enjoy for longer. Uh, although you know, uh, retro games are really, really stupid expensive now too. Hopefully that bubble will burst uh, soon. I did uh, uh, pick up some games recently. Uh, I, I, I recently got uh, a nice batch of... Um, like for the CDI, uh, some reference uh, CDs, which I did not own. Uh, I do have a good bunch, but uh, there were still quite a few. And this guy had a lot of them. And, and in such good condition too. Quite uh, quite amazing to find such uh, uh, lots nowadays. Uh, and not people asking like 20 bucks for a single CD. Uh, and it was quite nice, you know. Two, uh, two bucks a pop. Uh, which is quite, uh, quite neat. Uh, and yes, that is just for collecting. Because uh, do they still have much value in terms of gameplay or actual information? Probably not. Uh, like of some of those are are, are tour guides uh, for for England, for example. <laughs> so you know it is. I must admit that it is real a a bit of a nostalgia just going through that where it was like. Although in England, you know, uh, does does time really change there? <laughs> uh, but it is kind of nice to just see those old images of what it was like uh, in the nineties. Uh, what bed and breakfast to go to and such. <laughs> but I imagine half the stuff still exists. Yeah, I saw that from the uh, Angry Video Game Nerd. I, uh, I I don't actually have that one. <laughs> but some of the stuff can be can be quite hilarious uh, to, to go to and just check out. Uh, and it was kind of my intention too. It's why that I did that... Uh, um, uh, actually, it's over here, right? Yeah, because I didn't. 
get rid of it obviously because i made that video of uh, of the chess one here uh you know just to get that old content out of there and we'll be uh i will try to make more of those uh so much is kind of interesting and just you know to have that archived uh, as well it's unfortunate because now i don't know where saboteur actually is and i don't think the manual actually says it either does it Uh, because that is the only one we are missing now. Where is Saboteur? Yeah, I love I love cocktails, and it's just so much fun to to experiment with uh, with tastes and such, and just you know mix about. It makes you look cool. <laughs> Uh, but uh, getting a cocktail in a bar is uh, is bloody expensive, though. It's, uh... Man, where where is the? It doesn't seem like the games. This is like one of those big freaking maps. Saboteur. Nah, it doesn't say the time code. Uh, which one was that? Uh, the UK, uh, the UK tour. Yeah, I will probably make the, a um, like a video like the chess one where I just uh, paste together all of the um, uh, the content that's on the CD uh, into one video um, just to check out. I've got two. There's more. I've got one from uh, for Central and Northern England. Uh, I've got one. The one for. West England, I think, but there's also one for Wales, which I do not have, and there is another one. And it's so hilarious, because even on that disc, you know that, um, like, Philips helped out in that regard, you know, and, and you just see the, the Dutch people being so good in their marketing, because... This is a tourist guide about England. And what do you see? What do you actually get in there? An actual advertisement for KLM. KLM, uh, the Dutch Royal Airways. And it notes how to get to England. Well, how about going through Amsterdam? Have a stay there first. Like, what? <laughs> Just... Yeah. Just some Dutch guy being like, okay, we'll, we will help you out, but uh, how about putting that in? <laughs> Bloody Dutch guys, always haggling about. Let's uh Where's the box here? Yeah, Internet Archive has a very uh, big collection of, uh, of, of, of of CD images for the CDI. So, you know, if you're interested in CDI, you have a player or even for the emulator, uh, download it there because that's a great uh, source. It's safe uh, because many of those emulation websites, they are terrible. <laughs> uh, they can work, but they can also ask you to fill out like five surveys and then still not work there's a lot of scam websites out there uh, but yeah archive uh, internet archive safe and uh, especially the redump um the redump project they have great images that you can just burn to a cd and play perfectly fine on any cdi uh, player uh, though you will need to find you need to test out a bit the uh, the medium you use it needs to be high quality and you need to pinpoint what speed works best usually as slow as possible but my burner actually needed to be quite fast to actually work anyway we have here we see Le Mans racing Le Mans 24 racing 
Um, <laughs> yeah, the rice staffel is uh, is quite popular over here. <laughs> Uh, okay, this is, uh, uh, <laughs> this doesn't look like an official cassette. So hopefully this is just not a, uh, this, hopefully this is not, not some mixtape I made. What does it say here? I can't actually say it. <laughs> I think this is not actually the tape that I, that should belong in this thing. Mm -hmm. Well, top yo December. Uh oh wait oh okay yeah. I know now. Uh, well I don't know how but I think uh, this is a music tape. Uh, we will try. It. I think it's a top forty tape. <laughs> Uh, so not the mixtape from me, but the mixtape from my father, no doubts. <laughs> yeah, I needed to uh, burn my CDI discs uh, at 24 speed. It just depends on your burner and the media and that combination. Uh, they always say burn it as slow as possible, but when I burned it on 4 times speed, it, it just made dirt. Yeah, this is just a music tape. So another cassette that is just lost, I'm afraid. Wait, no, it did. It's still on there. Huh. All right. Cool. Do I actually remember this uh, this game? Nah. I have no clue what this one is like. Most racing games are pretty terrible on the Commodore 64, I'm afraid. There's some good ones, but they are rare. The world's most famous sports car race comes to your home. Uh, home computer screen with this exciting simulation of the 24-hour Le Mans race. I hope it's not a true simulation, because uh, I would prefer to go to bed this day still, you know? <laughs> uh, world Endurance Championship sports cars battle through... Uh, day and night sequences where both strategy and driving skills are required to take the winner's laurels. Nice, that's it, uh, tune loading. Uh, this simulation challenge, inspired by Konami's sit and driving simulator, reproduces all the elements of the famous race with every twist and turn of the track. Yeah, this is a very common uh, uh, sit tune for loaders. Really awesome tune as well. And there is French, which I will not butcher. Um, but yeah, I don't remember this one. I actually don't know about the arcade game, uh, if that's any good. Never played it. Uh, never played Grand Prix on the Atari 800. Uh, I do have uh, the Atari 8-bitters, uh, but I'm not too experienced with them. Uh, but they do have some good, good games in there, for sure. Yeah, this apparently is a Konami game, or was. I, I don't know it uh, from the arcade, so I have no clue. Um, Screenshots look a bit suspect. <laughs> Typically what they would do is like uh, put uh, screenshots from the Amiga version in uh, and, and just blur them some more so it's not very... So you're not very sure what you're actually getting. Uh, kind of mean back then. And yeah, this is from 1988 so I suspect those are Amiga screenshots. I have never played this, or I, I 
didn't even know there was a Le Mans arcade game. Uh, although, you know, it's not surprising. Uh, Le Mans is a pretty big um, racing event. Uh, not sure if Ed's still around, but he probably uh, would be thrilled. Um, you know, just like the car, it's probably also somewhere on the Commodore 64. I don't know it. What, what other racing games did Konami actually make? I mean, when I think racing games in the arcade, you just think about the uh, Sega Scalar races, don't you? How about we give uh, Grise some more treats here? I don't agree. Hey! Have some more uh, treats. I do want to find a way to have like a uh, chat uh, uh, comments. Dude, easy! They're not going anywhere, man. You don't have to hunt the bastards. <laughs> like have some chat comments where people can uh, give Grizo a treat. Or at least, you know, when there is a treat requested then, uh, or some bar fills and then, you know, it's treating time and we just have to stop and give him some treats. This cat man, he's all focused on food. Uh, I think I've told this before, but uh, I, I highly suspect that in um, the nest, he was kind of like the, 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 the you know, the poor kitty who didn't get anything. <laughs> so he's always been very, very focused on food. And uh, very, how do you say that? When they are um, like, like total gluttony, gluttony incarnate. Did you uh, put something back there? I don't see nothing, but that doesn't say a whole lot. Uh... Yeah, the runt. That's uh, that's a word. Thank you, Izzy. He also was super scared. Like if you. If you, uh, if you got anywhere near him, he was just gone. So he's gotten, uh, gotten around quite nicely in that regard, where you can actually pet him. Uh, because he was not having any of that uh, when, uh, when he was just around. Let's uh, fire. Fire does nothing. So, port numero uno it is then. I think you've uh, you've cleaned the desk by now, Griso. <laughs> but again, it's never enough with him. Prepare to start the race. All right. Uh, yeah, those those graphics on the back—they are definitely not from this game. <laughs> but you know, it might be okay to play. I mean, pole position doesn't look all that great, but it plays nicely. Hmm. What uh, what racing games did they have in the arcade, uh, Scott? Can you can you check that out? Why is that? At all those uh, early computer. Uh, games have these these uh, horizontal lines like it I never really like those like on the road it just looks so ugly man like the, the especially it's just too much of a contrast you know man this is pretty hard to freaking control There is a timer there, so... Those uh, cars they race with, I'm not sure what kind of class it actually is or anything, but those cars also always looked really cool to me, like those futuristic supercars. No clue what they are actually called. Uh, and yeah, this... Uh, this this is not the best game there, uh, racing game out there. 
driver retire to the pit. Didn't get very far, did I? Whoa, still had quite a bit to go for the first checkpoint. Okay, let's uh, let's give it another try. Unfortunately, Commodore 64 isn't uh, isn't known for the best racing games. Uh, the DeLorean is always cool, yeah. <laughs> uh, but was that also... Uh, did that also race in Le Mans? Seems like you can shift gears with the uh, action button. I mean, at least it's better than uh, Super Hang On, I suppose. But you know, that's not a very high bar, is it? <laughs> I think typically speaking, like the uh, uh, Specky did a lot better when it comes to racing games. Just because it could have the higher um, resolution graphics. And it didn't have these weird rhythm ribbons on the, on the road. It just look really ugly. I think the first game that it actually worked well with. Um, the first first game I actually didn't mind the ribbons that I know of. <laughs> is the uh, is the Lotus games like uh, Lotus uh, Esprit Challenge? What 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 what's it called? Awesome game uh, for the Amiga. Although I mainly played it on the uh, uh, on MS DOS, uh, especially the second game. Such an awesome game. Man, I was doing a bit better, but then I started crashing into stuff. Yeah, look, I got one, one ball further. <laughs> awesome. Can't even make it to the first freaking checkpoint. There is at least a decent uh, sense of speed in this one. Uh, but yeah, that's a big advantage when it comes to the Spectrum. Uh, they just have a yellow road most of the times at least. Yeah, I loved, I loved the, uh, the Lotus game, especially the second one was just like such a perfect game it was a great uh, advancement on the first one and the third one was great but uh was more like the second one like didn't improve that much i don't know uh i don't know the the drift game actually um not very familiar with uh the what happened? What the frick happened there? Uh, excuse me? What, what, what crashed me? <laughs> Man, those freaking spam bots. It's kind of an annoying thing about uh, Sheepjet, which I used to um, to do the uh, text to speech because because that stuff will get through there as well, uh, and I'm not really sure how I can prevent that completely without making uh, the chat just completely miserable. But oh well. It is what it is, uh, there, are, there are worse things to worry about. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there's nothing like I can really um, uh, block that would just make chat terrible. Uh, luckily Izzy is there to get rid of them on the YouTube side uh, and on Twitch. And, and, and But yeah, it does get, unfortunately get 
uh, through to the text-to-speech thing, which you will then record it into the video. So, oh well. Uh, everyone will know where to find hot chicks that are waiting for you. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't count on it, though. What? That didn't hit me. I do not agree. There's not actually a indicator on what gear you are. It's kind of annoying. Uh, and if more people want to help out in moderating for when Izzy is not around, uh, do let me know. Uh, always great to have uh, more moderators out there to get rid of that freaking spam. And eventually we will... We will have, uh, we have half the world blocked and there will be no more spam bots left. <laughs> Alright, let's see if we can actually get to the checkpoint here. Probably not, but uh, you know. Whoa, don't... Well, we're still going fast, so it's okay. Yeah, we're, we're making good time here. Stay there. Wow, this is a long straight. No! No! Don't tell me that was the finish or the uh, the checkpoint. Man, this is really tight. Of course it was. Damn it! <laughs> and look at that uh, that that slalom bit. How does it called in racing? Man, I show my uh, my ignorance again. Is it a chicane? Racing Lagoon? Never heard of that. PS1 did have some great racing games. Ridge Racer, uh, or the other side, uh, Gran Turismo, of course, and its sequel. Uh, wait, what? And uh, what was it? I had a rally game for the uh, PS1, which I really enjoyed. What was it called? Damn it. Uh, well, there was Free Rally, which was also pretty good, but it's not... It was more of an arcade-y... Arcade uh, rally game, and, and you... Were, you could land on your back, and then you had to... Uh, shimmy back and forth to actually tip back over. It was really cool. Sega Rally, awesome game. And yeah, the Burnout series. Uh, first one was kind of meh. Uh, but starting with the second one, that was such an awesome series. Uh, with the high point for me uh, being, I think, you know, where it made the most advantage was uh, free takedown. Uh, the ones after it were great too. But I think for me the highlight was uh, free. Uh, but I played two probably the most. Burnout 2, awesome game. I think I will not make it this time because, uh, yeah, only four seconds left. I didn't press the button <laughs> in time. So I was in low gear for quite a while. Man, I want to reach that freaking checkpoint. Okay, one, one more try. The original burnout was it's kind of okay, but it feels more like it, it didn't have this special burnout thing going on for it yet. It felt more like a normal arcade racer where it was a bit more uh, show when you did crash, but you know, the, the whole crash mode wasn't there yet, I don't think, in the first one. What? How did it? What? He was miles away. 
it was really the second game that uh, that really gave the series its identity and uh, the third one expanded on that so much Another awesome, uh, pretty cool game was the. Uh, well. The. Toka Touring Car games uh, were also pretty cool. Oh man. Yeah, we're not going to make it again. Thank you! <laughs> Sunday drivers. Again, almost! You're just doing it on purpose now, buddy. <laughs> yeah, we're not going anywhere. Uh, wow, uh, didn't even know there were CD drives. Uh, like a normal CD drive? Yeah, just for your 486. Uh, a parallel drive, man, that... Uh doesn't sound really fast. But yeah, them were, them were the days. Huh? Um, super annoying. I, I, I recently got a... Because in my new computer I do not have a, uh, a, a disk drive. Normally I always put one in. But I was like, you know what? I keep putting one in and, and having so little use for it. So I got another drive. Uh, an external drive. Uh, I figured, you know, I can use that. And I wanted to also, of course, rip some CDI games. <laughs> and I, I didn't even know. But it's... I got this thing. Which was uh, wasn't even cheap. Like, it's an Asus uh, Blu-ray uh, thing. And it can burn CDs and DVDs. Can read just fine. Cannot read CDI. Like, what the heck? What CD... What respectable CD player would not read any CD-I discs? <laughs> it just, it can't find anything. Like, no um, normal CD player will never find anything on a uh, PC. Uh, but, you know, software like uh, Isobuster uh, or Imageburn can actually find something still to, to get it onto your PC. To dump it. Uh, but this one, nope. Did not know that was uh, a thing. Man, having a CD a CD burner back in the 90s, that would have been so awesome, you know? Uh, because, uh, you know, the, your, your PS1 games were expensive. <laughs> you get my drift. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, when was the first time I actually got a uh, a burner? Must have, must have been early 2000s, I think. Uh, anyway, I, I don't uh, think we were going to reach the uh, cap point for this one. So uh, let's move on to... Um, let's see. What time are we living here? Yeah, let's, uh, let's do one more game and then... Uh, it will be dead for this evening. Sega CD doesn't have copy protection. I uh, did not know that. Uh, that would be pretty cool. I do have a Sega, Sega CD somewhere. Um, and I've never really explored that library too much. So it would be cool to go through that. Um, still don't know why it is a... How we got this? There we go. Yeah, I love the uh, Sega Mega Drive. Uh, and yeah, Sega CD is so expensive to get the actual games nowadays, unfortunately. Oops, pardon me. Uh, let's see, the next one here is a game I don't really remember, it's, uh, oh wait, oh wait, 
we went through there. Sn Snatcher. Snatcher, yeah. Man. Uh, Snatcher is definitely a game that you want to, uh, to, <laughs> to get somewhere else. Because that's, that stuff is expensive as hell. <laughs> And Lunar 2, uh, there was, uh, I, I, did, I did play Lunar on the PS1, I think. Uh, pretty cool. Uh, anyway, this is uh, Toy Bazaar, uh, which I don't remember at all. So uh, it looks, it kind of looks like a uh, Mario uh, Brothers game. Ugh. Does it have uh, side A? You know, it's kind of cool. Uh, Activision actually, you know, back then still the same logo. They didn't, you know, change too much of it. Uh, the logo, pretty cool. Activision nowadays isn't as cool, but you know, at least they uh, they are consistent with their logo. <laughs> Yeah, Lunar, uh, awesome games, um, and uh, yeah, just more emphasis on, on, on um, like a story, also had the voice acting, which was a bit hit or miss, I guess, but uh, as someone who has problem reading, I, I just love all voice acting, so I don't really care if it's as great. Toy Bazaar. What is this game about? Uh, Puxy, I don't know Puxy. Uh, what, what's that like? What does? Th oh, it was crazy. <laughs> Guide Merton, the maintenance man. Through a night of the Gizmo Automated Toy Works, the toys are in revolt. Balloons fill up with valves. Turn the valves off, but watch out for Hefty Hilda. <laughs> you don't really want to make her acquaintance, but you will. Oh, cool! I I do like some uh, some puzzle games at uh, at times. Um, you know, uh, what's the puzzle game? They're not not like the, I'm not I'm not too fond of uh, Sudoku, but uh, you know where you have uh, uh, actual puzzle gaming. That that's fine. Uh, love some NES uh, puzzle games like uh, Kickle Cubicle, one of my favorite NES games. Huh, it's kind of rare. Um, usually manuals did not have color. Psygnosis games are, uh, generally speaking, really cool. Yeah, they are, uh, they do have some really great games. Man, I really need to dive into the, uh, Mega CD sometimes, as it was called here, I guess. Um. Just to explore that some more, but you know, could say the same for the Saturn or uh, the 3DO, also awesome system. I just want to check out more. Uh, or the uh, what, what did I do? Or the CD32. Keep wanting to check that out more as well, though I need to repair mine. I don't, uh, Saturn is one of the systems I do not own. Uh, but it is a system that I would love to get into. Uh, but uh, they are also really expensive over here, unfortunately. Mm -mm -mm -mm.
what is this? Basics. C and close card for loading instructions. Okay. Live a little. Begin with four lives. Acquire an additional life for each 10,000 points earned. Game ends when you run out of lives. To start again, just press the red button on your joystick. Oh, this is actually red. <laughs> it's like, is my button actually red? But I know some, some have uh, yellow buttons. What are they supposed to do? Yeah. Totally right, Mr. Grimm. We did, uh, we did, we did love our uh, microcomputers. I suppose. Um, I am glad that I do have a um, um, a, a Dreamcast, uh, which I also uh, picked up uh, much later because Dreamcast Sega really, really dropped the ball when releasing the Dreamcast over here, unfortunately. Uh, because that was actually a system I wanted to get when it was new, but uh, it was near impossible to get. So uh, when I, you know, when it was finally getting available, the thing was already being discontinued by Sega. So what was the point? <laughs> so, you know, PS2 it was. But I did end up getting one and uh, yeah, loved that system as well, although the control isn't the best. Um... I don't have a Commodore Plus 4. Is that any good? And the GameCube. Uh, I do have a GameCube. I don't have too many games. Also not too experienced with uh, the GameCube. Um, yeah, only only very few games. Uh, I do know there's some, some good ones on there. But uh, yeah, uh, mostly was in the PS2 back then. So that was uh, my focus, and as such, I also didn't actually know anyone who owned a GameCube. Um, but yeah, I would, would like to get into that as well at some point and play some of those games like Eternal Darkness look like a uh, really cool game to go through once. Um, I do have some of the uh, Mario Party games, they are, they are fun. Not sure if this game is uh, going to work, that... Continuous black screen looks a bit ominous. And the ZX Spectrum, I uh, it wasn't very popular over here, um, and I I because of the color clashing. Um, or the total transparency because to avoid the color clashing. Uh, meaning that there is less contrast. Uh, I find it just difficult to see. Um, but there are some excellent games on there. Um, and I will begrudgingly uh, admit that there are some ports that are better on the uh, uh, Specky than the Commodore 64. Uh, although I never played it myself. Did they? The, uh, the the first two Mario parties mm, should I say they were also the best? I don't, they were at least they had the most character. I think you know it still felt fresh, uh, and boards didn't get too overly huge and complicated, so it was easy for for also uh, Granny to get into. <laughs> um, But, wow, uh, kind of hard to imagine that anyone would look for a remake of those. Yeah, <laughs> those freaking spinny, uh, where you have to spin the little joystick of the N64, uh, they, those weren't great. <laughs> I didn't like the joystick or the uh, controller for the N64 in general. I never found a way that uh, that was truly comfortable to me. Like I love some of the games, uh, but like I love Super Mario sixty four, but just struggling with the controls. Just uh, yeah, too bad. <laughs> uh, and it, you know that probably also has to do with 
just being so used to the dual shock controllers by that point and then having to deal with a stick that was awkwardly in the center it's just like what well, left hand right hand what no <laughs> But uh, oh well, there's there's been some terrible uh, uh, game pads. Uh, I think the Dreamcast one is also pretty bad. Like so clunky, and you got the cable that comes out of the bottom. It's just a bit weird. Uh, and then those two gaping holes at the top. <laughs> And the uh, uh, the the standard controller for the um, uh, CD32 also not the great. Although it 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 I must admit that it didn't uh, feel that bad in the hand. It just was not the best built controller, uh, or or that behemoth of the um, uh, crap. What's the name now? Damn it. Um, <laughs> I'm blanking out. The other Atari uh, system. Oh well. Uh, or, the, or the dangerous disc of the Intellivision. No, not the uh, not the fifty two hundred. Although that controller is also pretty eh. <laughs> no, the last one they made um, with the cool uh, Alien vs Predator game. Yeah, the Jaguar. There you go. Thank you, man. <laughs> Sometimes my brain just shuts up for a bit. Yeah, CDI has some okay controllers. Um, like the mouse is pretty cool. <laughs> Must admit. Uh, and the light gun does work fairly well. Yeah, the 5200 uh, controller was pretty big too. Like those, uh, some of those older controllers, like the Coleco version uh, in television. Um, what did you do to get something happened on my screen here? <laughs> you pressed the button, uh, but yeah, they they had those uh, those those keypads at the bottom as well, where you could have those inlays and such, and that make the controllers just so much bulky. Whilst you know most of the games didn't even use half the buttons. Kind of kind of ridiculous going back. Um, but it did offer some things that other games like the uh, like you know just having a button for an inventory screen for example that some television uh, games actually did use um, you know it's pretty cool yeah I don't think this game was going to work uh, so let's test out if the other side of the tape is going to work we can leave it on but it i mean it's been so long it should have showed us something by now did i ever tell you that i don't have a lot of patience <laughs> although this is a really big tape it uh, turns out holy crap Or a simplistic, or what looks like a simplistic arcade platformer. Um, seems like a very, very big tape. Generally speaking, the bigger the tape, the more issues it will have. Uh, the smaller tapes tend to be of a bit better quality, uh, it seems. <laughs> yeah, I'm not known for my patience. <laughs> oh well. Can't have everything, right?
Man, he is uh, he is being very content. Not sure if he's still in frame here. <laughs> Although I might have just turned on his fighting mode because I feel a nail going through my skin at the moment. <laughs> he barely ever actually. Uh, hurts anything well you know i guess a fly or something but usually he's even too lazy to go after those um, but yeah even if he gets pissed he tends to keep his uh claws what do you call that when they uh, when the nails are uh, retracted that's the word yeah I'm, I'm getting a bit slower in the head it seems <laughs> Man, this tape seems to be a bust as well, because now it doesn't load at all. That's unfortunate. I wanted to play some uh, some, some Mario Brothers ripoff. Look who we have here again. Yay! Ah, there we go. It did load. Let's uh, let's see how this plays. Or is it still loading? I think it's still loading. Damn it! <laughs> man, Activision, make clear that you're loading the game, man. I was all getting excited and stuff. Activision did uh, make some really good games back in the day. Um, nowadays, of course, they've went the way of the money. Chasing that ever growing coin uh, goal, uh, which you know does hurt quality overall a bit. Just release a game half done and you know, just patch it up as you go, <laughs> or you know, just move on to the next game. Yeah, the Great Yana Sisters. Uh, never played that on the Amiga. I, I actually did not know that there was an Amiga version. Doesn't surprise me, but I never seen that. Uh, did play the uh, uh, Commodore 64 version. Uh, a friend of mine ha uh, had that. Uh, which is, uh, I hope for him, he still has it. Because that is a pretty rare game. Uh, but it is a... Pretty good Mario-like game. It's I never really got it wh why they got in so much trouble because it does play differently enough that I find that it is well different. It doesn't feel like Mario, but you know you just see where it's clear that it's got a uh, uh, where it's got its inspiration for from. Uh, but yeah, fun game, awesome music too. And uh, yeah, but never knew there was an uh, uh, Amiga version. It was also a recent kind of, well, I want like a, a new version of that game. I wouldn't call it a remake, um, which was kind of okay-ish. Um, I think I have that, uh, only played it a little bit, where you can change between Dark World, Light World. Um, but it, it felt more like, you know, just ha putting a familiar name onto a new platformer than uh, actually playing like the Gianna sisters, like the original. Uh, what was another cool game? That friend also had the, uh, the DuckTales games on the Commodore 64, which was also really fun. I had that as a MS-DOS game, uh, and it was the DuckTales, uh, it was like a... a Sort of, kind of, simulation game almost. Well, not simulation. It was, you know, you had a goal of making enough money, more as, as uh, that other dude. Forgot his name. Um, and you basically had mini games. Uh, you had to go through the jungle and through a cave where it, uh, with a mummy. <laughs> or you could uh, dive into uh, Scrooge's money bin and find his... Uh, Lucky penny? Is the penny? Dime? I think it's a dime. 
Um, you know, it, and and it was the uh, what what's that game? It's also um, uh, very like on the twenty six hundreds where you fly through the barns. There was also a uh, uh, a a mini game in there and a mountain climbing mini game. Uh, yeah, Glum Gold. That's the name. A dime. All ah, right, a dime. Uh, in the Dutch version, he has a quarter. <laughs> um, yeah, in the Dutch version, he had a uh, uh, gelukskwartje. Lucky, lucky quarter. <laughs> I uh, recently checked out the, uh, the, the newer cartoon. It's actually pretty enjoyable. Uh, I thought I would budge it up, but no, it's, uh, it's pretty good. Um, still prefer the first one, uh, the first run, just because of nostalgia, I suppose. Uh, but I was quite surprised uh, to see that uh, Disney is actually capable of putting out some decent stuff where you can actually have a laugh with. <laughs> uh, lately, Disney hasn't been doing uh, too great in, uh, in 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 filling me with some entertainment. <laughs> oh well. Not, uh, you know, I guess they are also chasing the coin. <laughs> Hopefully they will not swallow up everything that's out there. The mouse devours all. Yeah, and I was uh, I was first worried. I, I I wasn't a fan originally of the uh, you know just a difference in the animation style, uh, but yeah, just the writing in it is it's just funny. And I actually like that they gave uh, the cousins a bit more uh, personality. Um, and uh, what what's she called, Lizzie? The uh, the girl. <laughs> Uh, she's actually quite hilarious in this one, in this version. Uh, okay, let's uh, let's try it out, right? We we did load now, right? Nothing's happening. Do we need to put it in the? Oh, right, it's still in port one. Webby, yeah. Lizzie is the Dutch name again. Webby. Still not working. F1 is the way. Yeah, this doesn't look like super, like Mario Brothers at all, does it? Uh, I have not tried uh, Sonic the Hedgehog on the Commodore 64. It's really something that I should check out soon. Maybe next year, uh, next next week, I, I should check out some uh, some cool homebrews for the Commodore 64, uh, including uh, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. Would be fun. Uh, the original Ducktales did have some Donald. But just like a uh, recurring character sometimes. Can we... Oh, okay. Going. Yeah, that's true. Like, the comics always uh, had Donald uh, as a, a standard person. And, uh, yeah, and the Toonie was just like... This, this random dude that sometimes appeared. <laughs> and it's unfortunate because everyone knows Donald is, uh, is, is the best. <laughs> I have no clue what I'm doing, but I'm, I, I guess we just... Okay, it worked before, but now it doesn't. Uh, yeah, I also think that uh, this this iteration, the new version, is much more uh, faithful to the comics, uh, which is cool. I'm, I mean, I'm not much of a comic reader myself, so it's not like I would really know what's what.
But uh, yeah, especially the uh, the old. The old uh, uh, shorts from Donut was awesome. Uh, Nobilia, I uh, recently played on stream as well. Really cool game. Yeah, the Disney in uh, World War Two around that time, they made some really crazy tunes back then. <laughs> I have no clue what I'm actually supposed to do. Like, I, I, I think everything needs to be off, right? Whoa! And we're game over. Oh, well. And uh, of course there was an awesome uh, Disney or a... Uh, uh, the um, uh, 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 DuckTales games for the NES were awesome as well. That also got a uh, cool remake. With the actual voice actors, that was just so... So, so crazy um, that they got the original uh, voice actors for that. Still not sure what the heck I'm... Yeah, I love the, uh, what's that, coffee? I love coffee. <laughs> Most of the uh, the Capcom Disney games were pretty good. Um, not, like... <sighs> Quack attack. There was, uh... Quack Attack was like, uh, kind of like uh, 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 Crash Bandicoot, wasn't it? And hey there, Mr. Wario, great to see you. Uh, we're doing pretty good. Uh, well, actually, I have no clue what the heck I'm doing, but, uh, you know, uh, that, that's standard. Seems like we actually beat this level. I, uh, I played Quack Attack on the uh, um, PS2. And what other Disney games did I have? Uh, yeah. I didn't like Tailspin on the NES. Uh, the Little Mermaid was okay-ish. Was a bit on the uh, over easy side. And Duck, Darkwing Duck was pretty cool. Like, uh, really, uh, really, really um, Mega Man like almost. And just fun. And uh, Donald Duck going Quackers. Uh, do, 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 do I know that one? Uh, no, I don't... Oh, wow, I thought everything was done there. No, I don't think I do. Uh, I do know Quack Attack for uh, Mega Drive, which was also really cool. And, of course, uh, um, uh, World of Illusion. One of my favorite uh, co-op games on the Mega Drive. Just so much fun. Yeah, the Turbo Graphics version of uh, Darkwing Duck is not great. <laughs> I don't know. I did. I didn't like the uh, Tailspin uh, game that much. Uh, found it very meh. Uh, but you know, also not much of a fan of the cartoon. So you know, that doesn't help. Huh? 
Yeah, Castle of Illusion, awesome game. Man, those spam bots. Still at it. Yeah, Castle of Illusion also has a uh, remake, doesn't it? Uh, never played that. Uh, one that I wanted to get uh, at some point, but never did. Oh! Damn it. So close. Yeah, Castle of Illusion was a uh, awesome platformer. World of Illusion is to me one of my favorite uh, uh, co-op games. Uh, also, what is really really cool in World of Illusion is that you can you actually have three three different uh, playthrough options. Like the game is slightly different if you play as Mickey uh, as opposed to Donald. Uh, as opposed to both Mickey and Donald, you have a couple of different levels and, and a couple of exclusives depending on who's actually playing. And that's just really fun uh, to explore them all. Really cool. And uh, yeah, it's just really cool to play that game together. Uh, and I don't know if... Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, is that remake of Castle of Illusion cool? Is it worth getting? I don't know. It was one that I wanted to get. Uh, but I never did. So I should. And I think uh, we are about done for today. Why is here? Uh, I never... I never played uh, Magical Quest. That's for the... Super Nintendo, isn't it? Where you change customs. Uh, oh, thanks, Izzy. So I might check that out sometime uh, as well and just get it. Uh, because that's just a game that I was silly. I totally forgot that came out. Yeah, I never played Magical Quest. Uh, Get in the picking box. You know, we'll do that later. Uh, let's uh, get up some music here. Or I do remember uh, from what I've seen that uh, uh, that those games look really nice. I think it, it also had a sequel, right? Hey buddy, how about some milk, huh? To close off. Probably like that. <laughs> and don't get it all over the Commodore, huh? Because you are a slob. Kingdom Hearts, awesome series, uh, although, you know, the story makes no sense, but... <laughs> uh, I do, I, I do really like the uh, uh, Kingdom Hearts games, so at least the, the, the first two. Like the main, the main ones, at least, because if you say the first two, then uh, Chains of Memory is not the greatest. Uh, it's okay, you know, it's kind of different, but... Uh, Kingdom Hearts 1, awesome, 2, also great. Uh, I kind of... Kind of, kind of prefer the first Kingdom Hearts, uh, because it's more emphasis on exploration, or more rewarding to explore. Uh, but 2 does have better combat, that's for sure. <laughs> Uh, and the third one I do have, but I never actually played through it. Uh, it's, uh, I don't know, it's just... The... Yeah, this... Um, um... <laughs> um... 
this was sold to me as a main coon, uh, believe it or not. But uh, yeah, he's a bit, uh, it's a bit of a disaster as a main coon. He's he's not like a main coon, but uh, whatever. He's still nice, so whatever. <laughs> uh, but uh, I agree. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Kingdom Hearts 1, the first one is just, it's a bit clunky when it comes to the controls, but I think it has way more heart than the, than the, than the, than the second and third one. Uh, it's just, it feels more wholesome. Um, and it has just more platforming, and that is just fun. <laughs> but... <laughs> No, it's no, it's no problem, man. Uh, but he was actually uh, meant as a main coon, but he is just for a main coon. He is just a bit small. <laughs> so it's it's kind of silly um, that they and he wears his uh, always he wears his tail like in a crow. Uh, he can eat like a squirrel. It's just a weird, weird, very weird cat this one, uh, and he's rotten inside. When you, when he goes to the um, to the box. I don't know, man. Maybe, maybe, maybe I can sell him as a uh, chemical weapon or something. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and uh, most of the other Kingdom Hearts games I haven't actually played. Um, I did play Chain of Memories on the Game Boy Advance, which yeah, yeah it was kind of hard to get into. Uh, and which one was the one? Uh, we were the one the way with the kind of Pokemon kind of mechanic. Uh, Birth by Sleep is that one? I also think I emulated that one. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't buy them all. <laughs> this Kingdom Hearts games can get expensive too. Um, and yeah, probably I should get to the third one sometime again. But I don't know, man. That. Uh, uh, I just got bored with it in the Toy Story section. Um, yeah, Dream Drop, Dream Drop Distance. That's the one. Uh, all those weird names, man. Yeah, Dream Drop Distance. Uh, here's another cool uh, sit tune over here. Monty on the Run. Classic, classic. Uh, not an awesome game, but... You know, it's standard collector on, uh, on the old Commodore 64. Uh, but the music is legendary. Are you done? Almost, almost. He loves his milk. Uh, you know, needed to end it up anyway. Kind of expensive stuff, you know, that, uh, that cat milk. Uh, if you, uh, quick tip, if you have a, if you have a kitten, uh, just give him normal milk. But uh, once the milk, once you stop giving the milk for about two weeks, they will uh, they will lose their tolerance for it. So oh well, you have to buy the expensive stuff. <laughs> yeah, those names from Kingdom Hearts, I'm not sure what's up with them and uh, how they came up with that crap. But uh, it's really hard to, uh, to to memorize all those names. My favorite handheld console, you know, I, I'm not much of a handheld player in general because uh, obviously it's a bit harder for me to see. Uh, I think the one that I have most experience with is probably the DS, uh, which I've played the most. Um, uh, also, kind of, <laughs> I kind of enjoyed the, uh, the the PS Vita, which of course is the one that failed. And uh, yeah, that uh, I think that I actually also played that for the DS. Um, that 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 all those numbers over days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Vita was pretty cool. It's a shame that it uh, it failed so uh, so badly because it was such an awesome uh, little powerhouse. Yeah, I think uh, that's the one, Izzy, uh, with with the numbers of days. <laughs> mm. 
the plot of Kingdom Hearts is just it it goes in one ear and goes out the other. It, it just makes no sense at all. Uh. <laughs> Even when I uh, look at some videos that are explaining it, I'm like, huh? But <laughs> it's uh, it's it's so difficult to follow. Of course, they have a manga of that. Why wouldn't they? Does it make sense if you actually read the manga? <laughs> and it's it's it, it's like it's so full of filler words as well. <laughs> I do still have a, uh, a Vita. Um, don't know where. <laughs> Which is with uh, quite a lot of my collection. Uh, actually, I've, I, I think I do have it here. But I haven't, uh, haven't checked it out in, in quite a while. Um, but yeah, Vita was, uh, was kind of cool. I do have a Game Gear. Um, I also have a Atari Lynx, which is uh, is this pretty cool actually. Um, and I still don't know. I I named this before, and I keep forgetting the name of that console. Of course, it's also a crappy console, and I don't. It's. Uh, it's 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 a Game Boy knockoff. Uh, I think it's from Watara, uh, and it's from Korea, uh, but I'm not sure what it's actually called. Uh, and and the boxes of those games are hilarious, and I have a bunch of those. Uh, but you know, you've got features like Free Lives. So it's like a feature. It's it's hilarious stuff. Uh, they are pretty bad games, but it's just fun. And uh, the links, the links is cool. Links is awesome. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Mario. It's a thing that uh, that you uh, uh, thought was, but yeah, I, I, I don't know what what the name is. Uh, let me just quickly look it up because now I, I I I'm just I can't stand it if I can't. There was also the Quick Duck, I think it was, which came out around the same time. Uh, Ah, the Watara Supervision, that's what it's called. Uh, there were two versions of those, uh, I have them both. The Watara... Watara Supervision, that's the uh, the handheld. It's, uh, it's pretty bad. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think I'm going to, uh, call it quits in just a bit, because, uh, yeah, whoa. <laughs> it's been, uh, over three and a half hours. No wonder I'm slowing down a bit. Yeah, there are some, uh, there are some good videos on explaining the Kingdom Hearts, uh, uh storyline and timeline, uh, but... So things you're just better left, you know, just enjoying as it comes. And uh, as I said, like the first game, it just felt so wholesome and just nice. And uh, who cares uh, what is actually behind everything and doing the what to the who now and the thing and how it all connected. Uh, <laughs> it's so convoluted. Uh, but yeah, I just uh, really want to thank everyone again for hanging out and... Uh, you know, just check out these games with me together and just have a fun time and, uh, you know, um, it's a nice way for me to socialize. So really appreciate the time that you invest into actually uh, tuning in. Um, really cool. Uh, so thank you very much for that. And what are you, what are you coming to, what are you doing? Oh, do you want more, uh, just coming to say goodnight here? <laughs> Never knew there were uh, also uh, Chinese 
uh, knockoffs for the links. But yeah, I love the links. Some really cool exclusive games for that. <laughs> uh, well, this stream, uh, you know, I lower the value enough as it is. So don't worry about anything that you say in the chat. <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, really, really cool. And yeah, I hope to see you guys next time as we explore some more Commodore 64 or perhaps some CDI or something else entirely. Who knows? Who knows? If there's any requests, do leave them and uh, we can check them out. Like next week, I think it will be fun to check out some homebrews on the Commodore 64 because I did want to check out that Sonic game myself as well. So might as well and check out some others that are out there because I know there are some really cool games. Uh, anyway. For now I say a good night or good day depending on where you are still, uh, although you know it's probably mm, even at the, the far end it's probably good evening by now, <laughs> uh, but you know someone from Australia is watching probably good morning. Anyway guys thank you very much once again uh, for watching and uh, yeah until next time take care and bye bye for now. The muzzle.